Welcome to another night of championship boxing here at the historic York Hall, brought to you by Lee Eaton and Let's Go Management in association with TM14 Promotions and Into Boxing. Joining me, Ali Drew, this evening, we have on comms Andy Clark, and he's going to be joined by Craig Richards. And we've also got joining us now is the promoter, Lee Eaton. Welcome. Right, Andy, I'm going to start with you. Uh, we were here four weeks ago for another one of Lee's shows. It was a fantastic night. Back here again, and it's going to live up to the expectations. Yeah, really looking forward to it. He's, he's, had, a, he's had a tough couple of weeks, our man here. We'll, uh, we'll hear about that in just a second, because we were due to have an English title fight and a Southern Area title fight, but boxing can be a difficult mistress at times, so those two fights don't feature tonight. But we, despite that, we've still got a real interesting blend, because we've got three fighters making debuts, um, one of whom has got Bradley Skeet in his corner, Rob Vincent, Harley Whitwell was a real good amateur, Owen Gidman coming down from Northampton, I've heard plenty about him. A really interesting story behind Lynn Sandstrom, who boxes for the WBA Intercontinental Super Flyweight title uh, against Sarah Mojanovic, met her at the, at the weigh-in yesterday, met both of them. And, there's plenty of other fights going on you know, around them. So we've got eight contests in total. Alfie Winter top of it, top of the bill, with Kevin Mitchell in his corner. It's not been the easiest one for you, this, has it? And these are just the, these are the things that people don't understand or don't know, is that putting these shows together, the best laid plans and all that, you just have to play the cards you dealt sometimes. Yeah, listen, it's been, um, it's been a stressful few weeks, obviously. First, Reese Bellotti got injured, so we lost our main fight with um, Amin Jahanzeb for the English title, which was going to be an absolute cracking fight. We'd have bought about 300 fans between them, which obviously, it's always a great atmosphere at your call, but obviously we've, we've missed that. And then um, Mace Ruiz last week um, on Thursday, he, got, um, he went down with COVID. Obviously, COVID's been a, a big thing over the last couple of years. It's been, uh, been forgotten about a bit lately, but obviously, Mace has got COVID, so Jeff's had to miss out on um, on the fight. Uh, hopefully, we're going to reschedule that in a couple of weeks. But still, got a great show. Um, obviously, Lynn Sandstrom is um, trained by a good, good friend of mine, Tony Del Vicio from Sydney. Um, he rang me a few months ago, asked me to put a fight on for him. Um, he said he said blowing smoke up um, up Lynn's butt, ass, so funny, so that, um, and so I was like, yeah, let's get it on. It's um, it's a great fight. She looks very, uh, very good fighter. Um, and then there's a packed undercard as well. So I'm looking forward to um, Robert Vincent's debut. He sold a load of tickets, trained by a good friend of mine, Bradley Skeet. Obviously, Harley Whitwell is a great amateur. She's um, looking to make her debut as well. So yeah, it's a good, good strong card, and I'm looking forward to it being a, a good, exciting night. Yeah, and to have such a strong card, and they're going to be, you know, exciting fights. They're, they're exciting prospects. You know, some of them making their debuts, going into the pro ranks. The fact that you've had two fights sort of drop out, but you've still got, you know, an exciting card. How good is it for you putting on shows like this? Yeah, listen, it's, I, I pride myself on putting on 50-50 fights. I've done it. I've done it over the years. Obviously, at your call, a lot of shows. So I, that's what I love doing. Obviously, small hall boxing is where it's the. That's where they all grow on the small hall boxing before going onto the big stage. So um, to to still have a good card when obviously this is obviously the the, the luck we've had is um, a blinding. Now, Andy, last time we were here four weeks ago, the atmosphere was unbelievable, as it normally is at a York Hall. But it was great last time, and we had some absolutely fantastic fights. Just a sort of summary of the fact that that type of show, a lot of people hadn't heard of the fighters that were on the card, but yet the performances and, and the show in general was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. It was great. And any time you have a domestic title, whether it's a British title, a national title or an area title, you're just guaranteed a really good competitive fight and a good atmosphere. Um, they, they are just the gifts that, that keep on giving. And we had three of them last time and they were all superb. And, that's what we've got to look forward to as we head into next year, just having more of those types of, of contests. But one thing I like about the card tonight as well, Lee, is that I always look on the right-hand side and see who you've managed to get because I love lads like Lee Hallett, Harry Matthews, Justin Menzi. We saw Hallett and Menzi four weeks ago and they gave really good accounts of themselves. And Harry Matthews is a, is a proper operator. I was talking to Balraj Kara, who he's boxing, and I said, listen, you know, you need to make sure you're right on it tonight. He, he knew that. They said, but if you start slow and he fancies it, you're in trouble. 
Yeah, listen, with um, Harry Matthews, Lee Hallett, Justin Menzies, they could all turn it up on their day. And we're seeing it with um, our good friend Lewis Van Pooch at the minute. He's absolutely flying at the minute. Cole Sampson on the away corner, four wins in a row. If they fancy it, these boys can really fight. And that's what they, these prospects need. Obviously, Balraj is a proper fight tonight. And uh, even though in Gidman to fight, obviously, Lee Hallett on his, on his debut is a very, very tough debut. But listen, it's, it's exciting to see. The boys will always come and have it. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was thinking for, for Owen Gidman, who's, who's got a good good amateur record. But to take someone like Hallett on your pro debut, that, that's quite, you know, people look at Hallett's record and they won't they won't understand. You know, people watching this, you'll be pretty much tuned into how boxing works. So so you'll get it. But a lot of people will look at his record and that's a bold move, taking yeah. someone like him on your on your professional debut. But this is what you want to see, isn't it? Because th let's say you lose on debut to Lee Hallett, but, but learn a lot. That, that's that's a step forward. Yeah, no, 100%. Listen, fighters have lost on their debuts. Look at Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins, and, and there's how many people have lost on their debut and still gone on and, and, and won world titles and stuff like that. It's not the end of the world, but listen, it is what it is. Um, it's, it's a good test for him. If he gets through that, he'll learn loads. I think actually Lynn lost on a on a pro debut actually. Yeah, yeah I, did. I didn't realise that. Yeah. yeah. And she's you know now in this position fighting for a title tonight. Brilliant. That's, see, there we go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Johnny Nelson lost his first three. You know, yeah, there's there's exactly. plenty of fighters who who haven't managed to, to win on on pro debut. But the women's fight is really interesting because I, I know Tony Del Vecchio a bit myself, and yeah. I saw him out in Dubai. We were both out there. And he's got a real good setup at the Bondi yeah. Boxing Club. And as soon as I saw that's where she was boxing out of, I knew I could expect to see him yesterday. The story of that fight, you did briefly outline it. It is really interesting though, because people never would have guessed that was supposed to be in Vietnam. Yeah. And now it's in East London. Yeah. You know, these are the kinds of things that Quite similar. these are the kinds of things Quite that you similar. deal with. <laughs> yeah. But no, listen, it's, it's a good card, I'm looking forward to it. Um, 2023 is going to be a lot, uh, very exciting for the Let's Go management team. Uh, a few things going to be um, announced in the next few weeks. So I'm just, I'm just looking forward to carrying on, putting on good shows, um, and making small boxing lively. Well, it should be a good night, Lee. Thanks for joining us, no and you're going to be on commentary duty with Craig Richards when he arrives. Yeah, he Hopefully, he <laughs> should be here any moment. Uh, but the fighters are ready to go, so we'll hand over to our MC, Jonathan Millard.
Right. That's good stuff from Freire. Really good stuff. Garda trying to bull his way onto the inside. There's some blood coming from somewhere. I think it might be just up in the hairline there of Freire. Through a clash of heads, possibly. That's what you would imagine. Again, there's that left hand from Garda. This is warming up into a really good fight because Garda is bringing the heat here to Freire, who is responding. He crosses his feet every now and again, the Brazilian, kind of switches southport and ditches that left hand in off the back foot. And these two just going at it. Short right hand again there from Freire. He's landed on Gardner plenty in the second half of this round, particularly. High on energy, high on work rate here, Gardner. You don't really see him use that jab to set anything up. As I, as I said there, he, he threw a jab. Turns southpaw here, Freire. That cut's maybe a bit of a problem because the blood's going right down the middle of his forehead and possibly into the eyes a bit. Ref just having a word with Gardner there about carrying that head in low. But this is, uh, as I said, this is a good fight. That's an interesting first round. A nice double jab there from Freire. That's not the easiest round to score. The clean punching there, I would say, came from the away corner. Gardner applied the pressure and did get through with some shots. But for me, the more noticeably clean work came from this man. It was, I said at the beginning, what 100% have come here to win. Just getting that swab into the cut. There's no great problem there, I don't think. Get the adrenaline into the wound and hope it seals up. Coat a little bit of Vaseline over it. Let's see if they can just stem the bleeding. Corner, there. 10 seconds. You're allowed. Water, adrenaline, Vaseline. Those Second out, just saw round two. Tape. There's not too many things are actually allowed in the corner. And that solution has to be one part adrenaline to a thousand parts water. Referee just a little bit unhappy with the speed with which Ferreira's corner vacated the ring at the end of that first round. And again, Garner just looks to get onto the front foot here. There's that uppercut, though. He just takes those feet back there, Freire. Gives himself a bit of room and lets those long levers go. And Gardner's just closing his own space down as he comes in. There's a good right hand again there from Freire, who's just... He's making the adjustments here, just half a step back and just catching Gardner as he comes forward. Good left hand there from Gardner, that was a quality shot. He slipped a punch on the way in, but then again there gets pinned by a right hand. He followed that left hand up quite nicely, but Freire was able to, to answer back. This is a cracking fight to start the night. A minute into round two, Gardner just getting tight there again, lands a left hand to the body. Doing a slightly better job in this round, Gardner, of, of punching off that head movement. He's got to keep slipping, bobbing and weaving on his way in. But he's just got close enough there to work to the body. And increasingly, it's becoming difficult for Ferreira to keep him off. Good strong right hand there from Gardner, who leans onto the ropes. He's beginning to get to his man here. Had a little look to the corner there, Gardner. A little faint with the front foot as well. Just over a minute remaining in round two. Trying to double jab his way in, but gets onto the inside and landed a right hand. Good stiff jab there from Freire, who turns nicely. And then aims that kind of long uppercut. There's that lead left hand again there from Gardner. It's what he looks for every single time, but Freire can see that coming quite a long way out. Most fighters will be able to see that coming a long way out. He's got to try and use something to, to set it up, hook off a jab, rather than just explode straight into the hook. Every now and again, 
maybe, but it's something he does, I think, a bit too often. Took the feet in nicely there. Gardner then looked to try and throw that right hand. That's 20 seconds of round two. Again, there's the lead left, but he landed it that time, followed by a right hand as well. And then throws another left on the inside. And punch is coming back there from Freire. I make Garda having slightly the better of that second round. Dominated the first 90 seconds of it, I would say. The second half of the round kind of meandered a bit. And there's some good head movement. And there's that left hand. And that was a good spell for him, but then a right hand came back from Freire. And I can see why he's got some work in the away corner, Jean de Souza Freire. And I think more will be coming his way. Maybe the, the slight problem he's got is that matchmakers Go know that he's definitely coming seconds. to win. And if they've got a fighter who they don't want to see lose, then... Second down, he might round not be three. The man that you would choose. So into the third. Straight right hand there from Garner. Then the right hand comes in for Ferreira as well. And this is where Ferreira needs it. He needs this distance. And he needs to look to try and catch Garner as he comes forward again there. Just leaps into that lead left hand, which has actually landed a couple of times in the last round or so. Blood coming from the cut in the hairline there of Ferreira, but nothing too serious. That's good head movement there from Garner, but the problem he's got is that he's not in range really to capitalise on it. He's making his opponent miss, but from that kind of distance it's difficult for him to make him pay. Right hand on the inside there from Gardner. Managed to move in behind the left to the body. And there's a nice slip. He slipped that right hand really, really well and then just wasn't able to, to come back with anything. If you can punch off that head movement, if he can learn how to do that, it's not an easy thing to do. But then he'll be in business because that upper body movement, that lateral movement, is pretty good. Looking for the uppercut there for our uh, a decent stiff jab as we head into the final minute of round three. This is scheduled for six. And as I say, the pace of it has been has been pretty hot. Again, good head movement there from Gardner. But when he gets close through a big right hand there, when he's able to make his opponent miss like that. And get into punching range, he's got to capitalise. It doesn't mean that he has to throw something massive. He's got to land something, though. And the uppercut is slightly short there from Freire. I think up to the halfway stage, and this has been really competitive right from the beginning. Good long right hand there from Ferreira to finish the round. Right up above us. And that was a tight round, that third round. And it's very much in the balance as we head into the second half. He's just had the one pro fight guard, and that was over four rounds. So this is a different proposition entirely. He won that one four rounds to nil. 
against a very seasoned away corner fighter in Jordan Granham. But in Ferrari, he's got somebody who is right from the first bell come here to do a job on him and get the victory. Corner there Corner, for ten Dean seconds. Garner. Alec used to run the Lansbury in Poplar, just moved up the road to Poplar Boys and Girls Club. Del Grange was a good fighter back in the day himself. Seconds out, round Very experienced four. corner. Had a long chat with Alec yesterday. Always good fun. So into the second half of this one, scheduled for six. Jean de Souza Freire from Brazil, now boxing out of Mallorca. He is in the blue. And boxing out of the home corner in the black is Dean Gardner. Looking for that right hand there, Gardner. Sousa Ferreira will be well advised just to keep trying to pop that jab. Look for a big right hand over the top there. Gardner got close. I just think that when he gets close, he needs to try and relax when he gets close. Just let those hands go. Punching combination. He's aiming for big, big shots. Another stiff jab again there. Just catches him coming forward. Needs to try and just loosen up. Just, as I say, just relax a little bit. The head movement is good. When it takes him to where he needs to be, just let those hands flow. Just let them go. It doesn't matter if everything gets through clean or not. Again, there's that head movement, followed by the left hand. Work to the body there from Gardner. Good uppercut from Freire. Just tilted off to the right-hand side, found the angle for it, looking for it again there. He's done some good clean punching at times, the Brazilian. There's that left hand, which was half caught on the glove there by Ferreira. Garner just keeps coming. The Brazilian's one of these fighters who, from quite early in the fight, began to look a little bit weary, but I think that's just... I think that's just his face, to be honest. You get that every now and again. Fighters look tired, quick. Their face tells you one thing, but their body tells you another. He's got that sort of rubbery element to him as well, which just makes him able to, at least so far, soak up these shots quite effectively. There's that left hand on the inside again, though, from Garner, looking for that right. And again, that right hand is a really good example of what I was talking about. He kind of snatches at it. He's really tight when he throws it. If he could just, just let that flow, just, just sling it down the middle as straight as he can, then it might reach. But as it is, he's kind of strangling it. He's not been a pro very long, as I said. He, he went into pro boxing. He's come into pro boxing from, from kickboxing. That's another interesting round, another decent round. Ferreira taking a seat away to my right-hand side. And these are tight rounds. These are tight rounds. that lead left hand but he's got the right hand up there to to protect himself Garner just chipping away to the body every now and again as well he's got a very muscular kind of approach and Ferreira actually stylistically he needs a little bit of what Ferreira's got Garner they're physically different so they're never going to be the same but you look how loose he is there Ferreira there's no kind of wasted effort on him really if he throws and he misses it doesn't really take that much out Corner, of him. Danny Connor, just down at the bottom there used to be trained by Alec Wilkie former Southern Area champion part of that Second great out, round, round robin five. we had with him Ricky Boylan Tommy Martin John Wayne Hibbert fighters like that almost 10 years ago now I think it was Chris Evangelou that he won his Area title against Danny Connor. I'm sure he'll correct me on that if uh, if I'm wrong. So into the fifth. Yeah. 
He's just setting his feet and really looking for those long uppercuts almost. From Ferreira, who backed up to the ropes there, lets that left hand go. That was good for him from Gardner, just a little step off to the right-hand side and created a different angle for that left hand down the middle. Landed a couple into the body. Southpaw here, Ferreira, just kind of flicking, dabbing with that jab, but he throws it often enough, it gives Gardner something to think about. And again, that's that's the kind of area where Gardner could learn something from Ferreira. He's just using that lead hand, whichever way around he's got his stance. It's not really a weapon, but it just gives his opponent something to think about at times. He's gone to the ropes here, Gardner, quite willingly there, and then just comes off them and throws that left hand. And goes down to the body again there. A little bit of the snap has gone out of the punches of Ferreira here. Into the final minute. Garner gets up close and looks to bang to the body. Got caught with a couple of good shots there, Gardner. Looked for the long right hand, really committed to it, but Ferreira saw that one coming, just took his feet out and then clipped him a couple of times as he was just standing in no man's land, really. Good short right hand there from Ferreira, left hand to the body too. He's just got his mojo back a little bit towards the end of the round. The work rate dipped a touch in the middle minute, final few seconds of round five, and these are all tight rounds. Every single one that we've had so far, these are all tight rounds. What you've got is Gardner coming forward, and he's doing some effective work at times, doing some decent body work. He's landed that lead left hand, the half landed it a few times, the right hand every now and again too. Ferreira boxing mainly off the back foot, has given that ground well, given himself enough space just to, just to let those hands go and has done some good clean punching. Head movement is still there from Gardner. It's still there. He's got himself into very, very good shape. Throws that right hand. The feet just would. Second down, six and final round. He needed them to be, but this is a great fight for him. In his second pro fight, this is a, a fantastic fight for him because he's in with somebody in D'Souza Ferreira who can box. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's come to win. He's got decent technique. And he's got some minerals because this has been a tough fight right from the beginning and he fancies it. Nice jab there from Ferreira. And he just gives himself the room there, Ferreira. Takes those feet back a little bit, chops down with the right hand as Gardner comes in. there from Ferreira, a couple of those got through, three, four shots were thrown, that was nifty stuff, classy stuff, catches him with the uppercut as well there, Ferreira, as Gardner was, was coming forward, the Brazilians having a good round here in the final round, Gardner again, just has two or three, bounce off his face there, nice jab, uppercut, hook there from Ferreira, who's digging in here, Right hand there from Gardner. That landed midway through the round. 
the Brazilian is up the tempo here. He's putting these punches together. And as I said at the beginning, he's got that kind of looseness to him. He's able just to do that. And he still seems some plenty left in the tank. There was a good left hand up close there from Freire, which landed on Gardner. The referee, of course, will be scoring this one. And he's got a fighter in Gardner who has come forward constantly throughout the six rounds. A fighter in Freire who's boxed mainly off the back foot but has set his feet and punched hard when he's needed to. The more effective, the cleaner work for me has come from D'Souza Freire. Into the final 30 seconds. I wouldn't be amazed to see a draw here. Good uppercut there from D'Souza Freire. Who has won this final round, there's absolutely no question about that. And to wind up on that long uppercut again into the final 10 seconds. And this has been a great show opener. Garda looking to try and throw that right. Both of these teams digging their toes in as we get to the final bell and the brace between the two. And that was good stuff, that was really enjoyable to watch. As I said, I was kind of fascinated by D'Souza Freire when I saw his name appear. I've not seen him from ringside before, and you look through somebody's record. Three wins, three defeats, the three defeats in the UK, the wins in Brazil and Austria, a couple in the away corner, one in the home corner, but against a 13-1 and one opponent, and you know that he's going to come here and try and win. Definitely against a fighter 1-0 as well. He was always going to fancy this. Souza Freire. But whichever way this goes, that is a really, really good fight for Gardner. He'll have learned loads in that 18 minutes. Stepping up to six rounds in his second pro fight. Very, very competitive all the way through. OK, so the referee's drawn these two to the centre of the ring. Let's see which way it's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, after six rounds of boxing, we go to our referee scorecard. Referee Chance Copley scores the contest 58 57 for your winner from Sutton London, Team Gardner. Team Gardner gets it 58 57, which translates into three rounds to him, two to the Souza Freire and one draw.
Whitman. Whitman. It's a little faint now with the front foot of Gibbon. Shoots out the jab. jab. And it's a left hand to the body. body. Alex has got to close that space down. down. That's, that's what he needs to do. He's the short, short, short or two. two. And that's exactly what he looks to do there with Gibbon. Gibbon. Nice and smoothly, smoothly just takes those feet, feet out, then then lands a right hand into the body. body. Good composure for him. From Gibbons Gibbons so Gibbons far, far. And again, and there, there just, just able to able avoid to that assault from, from, from Hallett. Hallett. Relatively comfortably. Good little good jab there from Gibbons, too. But a good, good opening, opening round. round. Got a few pro pros, pros on the card tonight. tonight. It's all very interesting, interesting to see fighters, fighters for the first, first time. time. And he looks and super, super relaxed, relaxed here. The focus of Gibbman. He wouldn't, wouldn't really, really know, know that this was a professional debut. Leads off the right hand there, right 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 Gibbman. Right right Again, that's a decent jab. Doesn't look much, but it gets through the guard. There's a bit more on it than. First to appears, which is South Paul here, Gibbon. Gibbon. That's a good round. Good round. The man making, making his debut. debut. In that blue, In that blue corner. corner. He looked he very looked composed, composed, very, very lifted. Now they're not able to get to him, to him in that first three minutes. He'll keep the faith, though. He doesn't, he doesn't win many, that's true, but. but he always, he always looks to bring, to bring the heat. The Mean anything to an extent. Second down, round this is going to three. Be a out into Kidman. I think he's going to have to dig in in the third and fourth here a bit. Keep those feet moving. Keep that technique together. Doesn't want to get dragged into anything at close quarters here. That's exactly what Hallett will want. Keep using that jab. He steps in with that jab well. Kidman's in the white. Hallett in the. Black, gold, and green. Yeah. 
Leads off the right hand there, Hallett. Gidburn. Just allowing Hallett to lead off at times here. Needs to get busy with that jab. Looks for the one-two. Finishes with a left hook, which I think maybe half landed. Hallett with just a little bit of showboating before that. You can tell that he's really fancying this now. Gets tight to Gidman on the ropes and looks to dig in that right hand into the body. And again, Hallett's leaning in there. He dropped the forearms on the body shot, Gidman, that time. Finds a sneaky little uppercut through the middle. But I think the corner might tell him, Gidman, get on that jab. Keep that space between the two of you. Don't get drawn into anything on the inside. You don't really need to be doing that. He takes his feet in nicely there, Hallett. The left hand to the body, though, didn't land. Gidman just managed to take those feet.
you're up and running. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, the fights will be returning very shortly. Stay tuned. One two, one two, one two three, one two three. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. Our next fight, not too far away. We've been having a few little audio issues those first couple of fights, but I think we've got to the bottom of it this next one scheduled for four between Tommy Murphy and Logan Paling fight number three our MC Jonathan Millard is up in the ring just gazing over my shoulder to see if the fighters have appeared in the doorway and our away corner fighter looks like he has and this is another interesting one he's 0-1 Logan Paling but he wasn't supposed to lose on his debut and that was just last week, so he's come here to right or wrong tonight, no question about it. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, our next bout of the evening. Please welcome first into the arena to our red corner, Logan Paley! So this is Logan Paling, boxing out of Birmingham. As I said, one fight, one defeat. That was last week at the Holiday Inn in his home city. He was supposed to win. He was in with the 0-10 Jake Osgood, but lost 3-1. So I reckon he's taken this fight because he's desperate to get back in there and show everybody that was just a blip, which should make for an interesting contest. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, please welcome to the ring the blue corner, Tommy On his way in now, Tommy Murphy, trained by Alec Wilkie, 2-0. and oh. Had a chat with him at the way in yesterday. He's gone the distance over four in his first couple of fights. I mentioned he boxed Lee Hallett four weeks ago here, winning three rounds to one in what was a good fight for him. And I think he's going to find himself in an interesting one here this evening as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, so next bout of the evening, leading in association with TM40 Promotions and to boxing proudly present four rounds of action in the super lightweight division. So introducing first, this bout has been sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Our supervisor here at ringside, Mr. Des Reese. Our timekeeper at the bell, Mr. Ashley McCall. Ashley McKill. And our referee in charge of the action, Mr. Chaz Coakley. So introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. His official weight on the scales, a 10 stone, one pound. He enters the ring tonight with a professional record of one defeat, wearing the black and white shorts from Birmingham, presenting Logan. His 
opponent tonight standing across the ring, boxing out of the blue corner. His official weight on the scales, 10 stone, or one pound. He enters tonight with a professional record, a perfect one. Two victories, no defeats. Wearing the red and white shorts from Ladbrook Grove, London. Presenting Sonny. So touch of gloves and as I was saying during the ring walks, I think this could be interesting. Paling has got down. something Round on his mind one. here. Trained by Sean Cogan, away to our right hand side. Murphy in the red, Southpaw in the black there, Paling. Trying to pop that jab, Murphy. Box at Dell Youth as an amateur. Paling trying to find the right hand. Left hand into the body there from Murphy. He's got the feet nice and close. Turning around that front foot. Well there, Murphy. Paling tries to keep that head on the move as he comes in. Let his hands go there. Maybe just didn't quite have room to do what he wanted to do. Left hand into the body there for Murphy. He was decent. He Throws that double jab to get himself close enough and then looks that left hand to the body. It's a, a good tactic because it just means you're guaranteed to hit something. Jab again there from Murphy. Paling trying to move that head. At the minute, he's kind of moving his head when he's slightly out of range. He's got to try and slip that jab, leave himself in a position to throw something, which he did there, but most of what he throws are bent arm shots. He's looking for hooks most of the time, so he's got to be nice and tight for that. Decent jab there from him, from Paling, kind of exploded up with it. Right hand to the body there from Murphy. Just short with the right hand there, Paling, and Murphy pulled slightly back, was in a good position to, to let him know about it. Just landed two or three, maybe not completely clean. He's got good feet, Murphy. Just those little movements, short with the left hand there, but then turned it into a, a right hook. Little step off to the right hand side to try and change the angle. Murphy again with a three-punch combination. He's not landed anything massive in this opening round, but he's controlled the fight. He's controlled the distance, and that was good work again from him. Just pulled back slightly, little adjustment of the feet, made his opponent fall short with two or three, then got his own combination away. Sean Cogan, who runs Cogan's Corner in Small Heath in Birmingham. Some good gyms up in Birmingham. There's that left hand to the body. He's just packing with that jab, just trying to measure the distance more than anything else. And then just moves his feet in behind it nice and quick. Because that guard is quite high. Corner, 10 seconds. He does offer you a bit of body to work with. Seconds out, round two.
right hand to the body there from Palin. There's that left to the body again for Murphy. Paling just trapping his arm there on the blind side of the referee, just dropping his, his elbow on it, his forearm on it. Left hand to the body in there from Paling, who so far in this round has just done a slightly better job of getting to the distance he needs to be at. The way he boxes, he's got to be close, but there Murphy again just takes the feet in, nice combination to the body, pulls back out. Nice right hand into the body there from Murphy. The left hand didn't quite get through, maybe half blocked, and then just dipped off to his right hand side. Got a good rotation into it. Just putting a bit more on his punches now, Murphy. Committing to them just that bit more. And good use of the lead hand there, Murphy. It's not landing huge, but it's it's landing. It causes his opponent to reset. Nice right hand into the body again there from Murphy. It's good performance, this. Heading into the final minute of the second round. He's got a fight from Paling who's coming to him. He wants to try and make things happen. Right hand there from Paling. Looked like it got through. Referee just having a quick word about the heads. Palin can, can tend to come in a bit low with his head at times. Good left hand there from Murphy. Just a little step off to the right hand side. Just changes the angle. It's amazing how often that southpaw left hand, their backhand gets through. He just tends to find the gap, but particularly when he just gets slightly off centre and throws it straight. Good jab. Again from Murphy, and a lovely jab there. And he's just clicking through the gears a little bit in this second round. So nice upper body movement on the ropes on the far side. Palin smiles, he's enjoying this, and he'll certainly continue to bring it in the second half, but Murphy is the more skillful of these two. There's that left hand. A nice combination there. Shovel the left hand up and then the right hand into the body. Corners, 10 seconds. Seconds up, round three. So into the second half of this one, scheduled for four at Super Lightweight. Tommy Murphy in the red and white, Logan Paling in the black. Paling will continue to come forward. And Murphy so far has done an effective job of catching him on the way in. That's good body work again there as he just moves around that front foot, pivots around that front foot. And turns Paling well there. And what that means is that your opponent can't just come forward walk in on you and keep walking in on you if you pull back in straight lines all the time then someone like Paling will just keep coming and coming and coming and coming if you step off the line like he did there again Murphy leads off with a right hook and this is some good stuff from him he's landing some really crisp shots here Paling is trying to walk through him but it's not working because Murphy is accurate enough and skillful enough to land on him. <laughs> and 
defence using that jab, looking for the one two. He doesn't do anything flash Murphy, it's just good basics. Jab, one two, finishes with a right hand to the body again as he did there, missed with the jab, missed with the left hand, but he's in the right position to throw the right hand, so he throws it anyway, and that third punch of the combination gets through. Paling again, just looking to climb onto the inside here. He's really gutting this out here. He's absolutely determined that he's going to get to his man. There's that left to the body. He's worn a few of them. He's in terrific shape, they both are. Bit of marking, bit of damage around the right eye there of Paling. The referee, Charles Coakley, has to shove him off after he gives the call to break. But there's enough on these shots from Murphy. He's not winding up, loading up and looking to land something massive. He doesn't need to because what he's landing is enough. Digs his own toes in there, Murphy, and looks to let those hands go. I like this from Paling, though. This is all effort. This is all desire. Lead right hand there from Paling was a decent shot. Murphy looking for the uppercut. And again, like the first two, this is a real competitive fight. Murphy's winning it, but it is competitive. Again, there's that three-punch combo. Jab, left hand, right hand to the body from Murphy. That's what he's looking for. There goes the belt. So one to go, the schedule for four at Super Lightweight, Tommy Murphy in the red and white, Logan Paling in the black, and those highlights giving us a snapshot Corner, of what this has been like so seconds. far. You've had Paling on the front foot, a lot of effort, a lot of muscle, looking to try and get close, Second get out, tight onto the inside, where he can do some damage. And Murphy, for his part, has just used those feet nicely, he's taken them back, he's kept that distance, snapped the jab, Left hand, right hand to the body. So good technique. The painting's going to come for him. Hell for leather in his final round. He's three rounds down on my card. So if he's going to turn this around, then he's going to need the stoppage. Murphy just, again, just looking to try and find a route through for that left. Reached for it a little bit there, which has been unusual. A bit of reddening around the left eye of Murphy. So this has not been one-way traffic by any stretch. Painting has had his successes. It's just the blue corner has had more. And these two just st standing square on the far side, and a left hand got through there from Murphy, but Paling just setting his feet. Decent left hand there from Murphy, again, just pulls back, pulls the weight back onto that back foot. Paling, just leaning in, tucking up, getting his head on the shoulder, then looks to explode out and let his hands go. Paling still coming forward, made to miss there, though. No knockdown, correctly called there by the referee. Murphy just vanished, got out of the way, a little bit like a, a Toreador and Paling, who has very much been the bull, if you want to persist with that analogy, just launched himself into the ropes. And again, just looking for that jab, Murphy. Paling has had most success in this final round, I would say. I'm not sure it's not necessarily enough for him to, to win it. But again, it's been a good fight, this. We've had two home corner wins so far. We're going to have another one here, but every single opponent has come here with ambition. 
and Paling is certainly in that category. Smile on his face as we head into the final 30 seconds. Murphy just, again, every time he misses with that left hand, he throws the right hand off the back of it anyway. It's not an exact science, this. You're not throwing heat-seeking missiles. Most of what you throw will miss. But he just lets those hands go. A little faint with the front foot there from Paling. We haven't seen too much of that. And then just gets caught in middle distance. Final few seconds and what has been a very entertaining four-rounder. I think Paling would happy go a little bit longer. But that was a good watch. That was a good watch. I think both corners enjoyed that. I think they both appreciated the effort from the pair of them. I like the look of Murphy there, though. He's, he's got a good technique. Again, he keeps it simple, throws that jab, throws the one-two, looks for the right hand into the body. Every now and again, he had to dig his toes in and swing a bit because that was the way that Paling was going about it. And he never gave up on it, Paling. He was all energy, all industry, all effort. But Murphy never really allowed himself to get backed up to the point where he was in trouble because he'd get off the punching line nice and quick. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, after four rounds of action, we go to the referee's scorecard. He scores about 40-36 for your winner from Ladbrook Grove, London, Tommy Murphy. So Murphy gets it, four rounds to nil, and when you see that in the record books, you won't think too much of it, but that was a good fight. Logan Paling, there's, there's fights out there for him. He might want to try his luck back in the home corner when he gets back to Birmingham. Maybe he'll persist in the away corner, but there is plenty of work out there for him. And Murphy goes to 3-0, and, oh, and he looks a good fighter. As I've been saying, nicely set up. Sticks to the basics, does it pretty well. Had someone in front of him here who was absolutely determined to bring the heat, bring the pressure and make him crack but it never really looked like happening. Because he's got that movement and that composure. And we're just watching these replays here as he heads down to ringside. Landed a nice left hand there. Followed by right. I think he'll enjoy watching this one back, actually. No doubt he'll be back in the gym in Poplar with Alec Wilkie before too long. The paling is, I was saying, all the way through. Front foot fighter. Kept coming forward, kept coming forward. But as you can see here, he was caught plenty as he was looking to try and walk his damn man down. And Murphy just never really gave him too much encouragement. Okay, here he is. Performance. Um, I just want to give a credit to Logan who come in last minute. He weren't no journeyman. He was a he was a come to go fighter. He lost his debut last week or two weeks ago, and he got this fight. Obviously, he thought he was going to come down and beat a kid who's two and zero, get his career back on track. He's a good fighter, and I hope he does come again. Uh, the, the harder the fights are, the easier I make them look, because someone coming to go brings the best out of me. And uh, he brought the best out of me. I showed my class and I show that I belong here. People was telling me to pull out of this fight when he changed opponent, but it's me versus me. If I can beat me, I'll beat anyone. And that's a fact. Yeah, you got to showcase your skills in there tonight. He was a very game opponent. What is the game plan against an opponent like that? My coach Al and Derek, they just told me to show classy. I'm a classy fighter. I can fight, but why get all these bruises if I can box? You know what I mean? I probably got a couple of bruises. I don't know, I can't see. But it's part of the sport anyway, you can't have a shower without getting wet, as my dad says. I said it once, I say it again, and I'll say it every time I get the chance to. My dad is my best friend. Without him, I will not box. I, I was so close, I've had such a hard week since my last since I last interview with you. I had such a hard four weeks. Um, my dad kept me mentally strong through it. I think there was a part of me that weren't going to fight this week just due to uh, personal issues. But 
Obviously, I'm not going to go into detail, but I just want to wish my brother, Big Connor, the best of luck. He's got something coming up. I want to wish him the luck and everyone to wish him luck and pray for him, please. Yeah, because you were in action four weeks ago here. What What is the sort of plan going forward now? You've had a busy few months. You're on a roll. What are you looking for next? I'm going to have a, a break. My birthday's in 15 days. I'm going to enjoy my 22nd. <laughs> I'm going to come back uh, March next year, hopefully in a six round, I, if my coach thinks it's good. And uh, yeah, I just want to call my coach in quickly, please. Coach, come in. I come to Alex, nothing but a rat from Lambert Grove, and he's turned me into a half decent fighter. So without Alex. Sorry, that's my saying. A rat from Lambert Grove. Without Alex, I wouldn't be anywhere, but she wants to know what's the plans next. Alex, my manager. So. We'll get him out. Well, we'll try. It'll be after the new year now, probably in the new year. Let him rest up. He's had two fights back to back in the last month. So, yeah, if we're not rushing him, he's only young. Without Alex uh, and my dad, I wouldn't have boxed this week. Like Alex says, it's about being mentally strong. And with him and my dad in my corner, I was that tonight. How pleased are you with his performance tonight? Over the moon. Listen, when he came, he was all over the place. Only a young kid, and he's only young. But he's improving all the time. I just said to him in there, that third round was the best round I've seen since he's been with me. And he's, he's coming on well. He's listening and he's learning. That's all we can do with him. Yeah. Well, well done. Three and zero now. Congratulations. Just a bit of funny one. My mate Logan, my new mate, he says uh, he was from Birmingham. And QPR lost to Birmingham last night, so I did this for QPR. Yours! Well done, Tommy. Well done. See you. Right, it is our title fight next. The fighters are ready to go, so we'll hand over to our MC. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, we now come to our main event of the evening for the vacant WPA. The Continental Super Flyweight Championship. So please welcome our first challenger into the ring to the red corner, Sarah Mata. So 10 twos here, 10 two minute rounds for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Super Flyweight title. This is Sara Marjanovic, who I've seen quite a bit. I remember watching her five, six years ago against Patricia Burkholt, who's turned out to be a good, good fighter. She's boxed extensively across Europe, never been stopped, went eight rounds with Theresa Sharapova a couple of years ago. Sharapova, who lasted the distance against Katie Taylor. Last December, Taylor fights tonight. And her opponent, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, please welcome our second challenger into the ring to the blue corner. Sandstrom's a really interesting story. Boxing out of Sydney these days, the Bondi Boxing Club, trained by Tony Del Vecchio. That's Tony there. Born in Brazil, she was adopted by her Swedish parents, who are here actually, at just seven weeks old. She was an international table tennis player in Sweden. Moved to Australia, took up boxing. Lost two of her first four. And has boxed in the Philippines and Costa Rica. She will go wherever it takes to get a fight. So based out of Sydney now, as I say, but very much feels thinks of herself as being Swedish. Marjanovic from Serbia, very experienced campaigner. He pretty much made flyweight yesterday, actually. Sandstrom dipping in just under the super flyweight limit of eight stone three. Authorised by the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza. Their representative here tonight at Ring Zone 
outside, Mr. Des Reese. The bout has been sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Our supervisor, Mr. Des Reese. Our timekeeper, Mr. Ashley McGill. Our three scoring judges for this contest here at ringside, Mr. Chas Coakley, Mr. Mark Bates, and our referee and scoring the bout as well, Mr. Howard Foster. So, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, your call. Are you ready? They believe the hype, it's time to fight! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, her official weight on the scales, eight stone, three ounces. She enters tonight with a record of nine victories, three coming by way of knockout. 10 to peace, wearing the black shorts from Belgrave, Serbia, presenting Sara Marjanovi! Her opponent tonight, standing across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Her official weight on the scales, eight stone, two pounds. She enters the ring tonight with a professional record. Six victories, two coming by way of knockout. Two defeats, one draw, wearing the blue shorts. From Waterloo, Sydney, Australia, presenting Lynn Sandstrom. Our referee to give his final instructions. So Howard Foster, our referee for this one. We both I expect keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both watch your heads in close, good luck to you both. Just look. And joining me on commentary for the rest of the evening, the lean, angular figure of former British champion, former world title challenger, light heavyweight contender, Craig Richards. Yes. How are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Happy Second to be out, here. Round one. So into the first round, the schedule for ten. Two minute rounds. Sandstrom in the white and turquoise. Mojanovic in the black. Sandstrom starting nice and quick there, just looking for that jab. And the signature of these two minute rounds is the intensity, isn't it? Yeah. The work rate by both fighters all the way through. 100%. And Sandstrom's come out very fast in this first round. Looking to try and bang to the body there, Mojanovic. Got a capital in all these rounds though, with the two minutes, as you said. Well, that's what makes it, for me, a really good spectacle. It's something a bit different. Nice right hand over the top there from Sandstrom, who actually lost on her pro debut. As I said, she lost a couple in her first four, but has rebounded well since then and has been very, very happy to travel, go wherever she needs to go. That's the thing with fighters, it depends on how they take their losses, if they go to the gym and work hard and learn from them, or get complacent or not, so it's good to see that she's progressing and learning and building her career from her losses from her start, she could have quit really. Just short with the jab there, Sandstrom. I think she did get quite a lot of criticism actually, in the early stages, people wondered really whether she was cut out for it, people like to do that because there was a good story around her. People wonder whether that's it, whether you are just a story or whether you can actually back fight. it up. Yeah. Boxing's one of them sports, a very opinionated sport, isn't it? It definitely is. goes to tap a final few seconds of round one. It's a nice jab from Sandstrom. She just dips her knees, drops her height, and really pops it up. It makes it difficult for Mojanovic to deal with, really. So the first round in the, in the back there, and that'll be a round for Mojanovic. I was thinking earlier when I was on my way here, actually. Yeah. I covered almost all of your career until yeah. about this time last year, including your professional debut, yes. which was in this ring, wasn't it? Yes, it was in this ring, my James first James Child, yeah. it lasted... God, it passed in no time at all because he got cut almost straight yeah, away. Yeah, 40 something seconds, first round, it, it was over my debut. Which was, uh, most people would love a debut like that, early days work, so I wasn't complaining on the day. 
but York always usually does bring a good, nice atmosphere. You know, it's very compact and enclosed, so you can hear everything even though when there's not a lot of people in here. No, that's true. It's always like that. The noise just reverberates around here. Corners, 10 seconds. Got those changing rooms under the... Oh. Under the stairs, there's a couple <laughs> upstairs, but you'll have been under the stairs. Yeah, uh, I haven't yet been under the stairs, I've seen them the room. Luckily, I've been in the home corner most of my bouts at York Hall. So into the second round. Sandstrom with a good opening. She's, she's a number got, 11 with the WBA at the minute. She's actually got a very good jab. If she worked behind her jab more, she'd have a lot more success. She likes to work up close, but she's actually got a very nice jab. Ref just having a quick word. Very good body shots. Walking nicely downstairs there, Sandstrom got close. Just planted those feet. Beautiful jab. She really plants it. Yeah. It's just not like a scoring, it's actually a hurtful jab at the same time, it's like a rodding jab. Well, Janovic just holding and hitting a little bit there, trying to find room for that right hand. That's really what she's struggling with at the minute, Sandstrom's the busier of the two and is managing to get the fight really where she needs it. The Serbian corner going absolutely nuts away to my right-hand side and Howard Foster speaking to Marjanovic about exactly that, just kind of trying to drag Sandstrom down onto her right hand. Yeah, she's doing a lot of holding, didn't she? She's doing a lot of holding. Sandstrom doing well to work through it. Beautiful job again. You can see the reaction that got. Mojanovic just rocked back onto her heels as it thudded home, right hand into the body. Beautiful. She's working well in with her jab and then going into the body very well. Closing the distance and working her body very well. She's got a good game plan and a tactic. She has Sandstorm. Well, she's getting inside the reach of Mojanovic and just not really giving her an opportunity to do too much. It's hard to see what the Serbian can really do, do about this. She's got the hope almost that Sandstrom runs out of gas in the second half of the fight, but that doesn't look particularly likely. It's looking at preferably a uh, game plan would be to work medium range where Sandstrom's either working long with a jab and then working up close in close quarters which is not suiting her so it's like she's waiting for medium range but she's not giving her a chance to work at the distance she wants to work at which is a very good game plan. Corners, 10 seconds. Second down, round three. Let's see if the corners change any of their game plans going into the third round. Sansa again just looking to get busy with that jab. Good head movement to get onto the inside there from Sandstrom and just rattling the ribcage there of Marjanovic. She's got beautiful body work she has. She really lets her hands go when she gets in close quarters. Hands strong. Mianovic <laughs> looking to try and throw that one too, but sounds from able to slide under that right hand easily. And once she's done that, then she's exactly where she needs to be. It's almost coming together on the inside there as she just weaved off to her left, Sandstrom. Sarah's been very happy to hold throughout this contest and um, she's not very busy. 
he's given away rounds here and these quick three two minute rounds you ain't really got these uh the options i mean the two minute rounds you haven't got the option to not be working she needs to start letting her hands go if she wants a chance to win this contest heading into the final 30 seconds of round three that's absolutely right the, the thing about these two minute rounds is that work rate wise you've got to go with your opponent even if you don't really want to because if you get outworked and out hustled you can find yourself at a halfway point as you said just staring down the barrel basically yeah you let too many of these go before you know it. it's round six you've got four rounds to go and you're trying to force a stoppage it's too late these rounds go very quick look last 10 seconds already of the round she's letting round slip by now she's lost every round so far in my opinion Nice jab again there from Sandstrom. There was a big clutch of heads towards the end of that round there, about 10, 15 seconds to go. And amazingly, there was no cut from it, but you could see the head of Sandstrom in particular just rocked back. Well, there's a bit of swelling over the, over the right eye, actually, there on the inside towards the bridge of the nose. They've got the end swell out there, Tony Delvecchio in the corner. And we'll need to keep an eye on that because if that comes up too much more and starts to slip down during the course of the fight, then that could be a problem. But the head's just really cracked together hard. And the fact that the skin wasn't broken is pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, because amazing. That, 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 is, that could be a problem. 100%. Head clashes can always ruin a fight, especially early on. You know, your, your head's like the hardest part of your body. And when it clashes, usually the skin does split. So fortunately, she's uh, come out the right end of it. And she's okay to continue the contest. Corners, 10 seconds. Tony Delvecchio, he's got a busy gym in Bondi. I saw him in Dubai in March. He was there with TJ Dehany. They're hoping to get him a, a world title Second fight out, before he round four. excels off into the sunset. He's had a real good career. Mm. So, fighters coming through from Australia. Tim Zhu is the, the kind of leading light. But we had Dennis Hogan a couple of weeks ago against... Sam Eggington, Hogan was pretty unlucky against Harmony Munguira a few years back now in the world title fight as we head into the start of the fourth round here. I'm glad that uh, Howard Foster there pulled the girls on about the head clash at the end of the round to give them a warning to prevent this happening um, further. Nice right hand on the inside there and that swelling will give Mojanovic some encouragement because although it wasn't any work of hers that caused it, it just gives you that that's hard to aim for. And she's going after it more, the Serb, in this fourth round. I think she realises that she's three rounds down. And yeah. if she wants to get anything out of this, then, then the work has to start now. Yeah, I think her corner had a word of her in that, um, in, in during the break. And obviously said to her, she's got to start letting her hands go because she's come out this uh, round with a different attitude. So, yeah, I think her corner definitely had a word of her during that break. There's that jab again, just steps in. Dips to her right-hand side almost and plants it up. Now, just trying to bring the greater height to bear a bit there and push her back into the ropes from Sandstrom. Didn't have too much trouble with that. Right-hand lead there from Marjanovic was a decent shot. That got through. Heads there again. Very close. Right-hand into the body from Marjanovic. She's having a better yeah, round. A lot better just round. Not this is her to best win it, round, I don't yeah. think. She's not winning the round, but it's the best round she's had so far, I would say. She's come out of a different attitude. As the rounds go very quick, that's the 10-second clap already. Oh, she's got good right hand a good there shot from there. Santrum, right towards the end of the round. And there goes the bell. Where do you stand on the two minute versus three minute? I used to think that three minutes would be better, but the way that the two minutes delivers great fights, like it we does. saw at the O2 a few weeks ago, I don't think there's anything wrong with no. with with the difference. No, I like I like the two minutes. It's fast, it's action packed for winning boxing. I think. They should do um, some discretion if they maybe if they want to bring in a rule for maybe a unification. They can, if both parties agree, they can do three minutes. But I think in general we should keep it two minutes and give um, the excitement of the two minutes for what these uh, fighters have trained for their whole lives. Yeah, I agree with that. If, if it wasn't delivering the two-minute round format, then I could see why he would want to change it. 
And when it comes to whether they box twos or threes, basically the promoter can apply to the border control here, the commission in America, or wherever it is that you are, for three minute rounds. Yes. Exactly how you do with men. There is no reason that it can't be done. It's just at the minute. Second down, to round box five. Two minute rounds. If, if, if that true applied for Katie Taylor to box three minute rounds tonight yeah. against her opponent, then I'm sure the border control would have allowed 100%. it. 100%. I think there would be no arguments. And that's what I mean in big unification fights, championship fights, then there can be uh, different uh, cases. But I think on the general uh, conception of the whole thing, I think we just stick to two minutes. So into the fifth here. As Greg was saying, that was Marjanovic's best round, that fourth round. She just got a little bit busier, looked to let her hands go, caught Sandstrom on the inside a couple of times, and this is a bit messy. Yeah, it's getting a bit messy. She was putting her headlock and pulling her neck there. I think she's getting frustrated. That sounds a frustrating of the holding. She just needs to stick to what has been working for her, Sandstrom. She doesn't want to get dragged into anything bad-tempered or, um, or disorganised here, because Marjanovic... She's got those long levers, just steps in there with the right hand and then a jab to the body. Right, she's pushing down on the back of her yeah. head there, Mojanovic. I think a point might be about to go here. Yeah. And the referee's going to take a point away. He has spoken to her a couple of times about holding and hitting and then pushing down on the back of the head. He wasn't all that explicit with his signal there, Howard Foster, but I think he's taken a point. I'm yeah, not absolutely I'm, I'm sure. Not sure either. Also, uh, the swelling on her head looking quite bad as well, a little bit above the eye. And I think so they keep leaning in with their heads. Marjanovic well, found some good distance there. Sandstrom was coming in, just leaning in. And she managed to just take a little half step back and, and for a split second there, just had it really where she wanted it. She needs to work back behind the jab sandstorm. She's sitting there taking a lot of shots unnecessarily. She needs to create back her distances again and work behind the jab. I think she's neglecting the jab, which is giving her opponent um, confidence into throwing her hands and letting her hands go. She needs to go back to her boxing, what was working for her in the early rounds. That's absolutely right, because when she's been throwing that jab, as, as you say, it's been working a treat, but now she's just kind of walking in with the tight guard and yeah. her opponent's able just to give herself a little bit of room and just... Yeah, she say, just, just let the punches go. She's, she's able to tee up on her and create things while she's on the way in. Before, the jab was a distraction, so she wasn't able to set anything up because she had to block the jab before Sandstorm got in to let her combinations go. But now she's not jabbing her, she's giving her nothing to think about. So I think that's the first round that we could probably give to the, to the red corner away to our right-hand side. And I think Sandstrom, as I was mentioning, just has to try and combat frustration here and just stick to what was working. It's not always going to be pretty. She's had that head clash, that probably riled her up a bit. Yeah. But she knows how to win rounds against Mojanovic, and that's not yeah. how you do it. No, that's not how you do it. You see what I mean? She was neglecting her jab. She, looked, she leaned in with her head, and she was allowing herself to get teed up on there. And this is what I was saying about creating Corner, the opportunities for the jab. Seconds. Right now, she's, she doesn't want to be going out there doing that again. She's stick back to her boxing. So heading into the second half of this second one, scheduled for 10 for the six. second WBA Intercontinental Super Flyweight title. Lynn Sandstrom is in the turquoise and white, I'll call it. Sarah Marjanovic in the black. Lindstrom boxing out of the Bondi Club in Sydney. Born in Brazil, adopted by her parents, just a few weeks old, moved to Sweden. But again, that's a good start to the round here from Marjanovic, and you can just see from the kind of urgency of her movement she's taken a lot from the last yeah, couple she particularly is. that last round and she fancies this now you're, yeah you're, she's built confidence now and that's what she didn't want to do she's allowed her to get into the fight and build confidence when she came out first 10 seconds she started throwing her jab again and that's what she needs to start doing again now she's going back to what she did in the previous round tucking up and leaning in with her head which she doesn't want to be doing she needs to control this fight off of her jab again it's always interesting watching a fight when a fighter has been doing something so effectively, been doing something that has been working so well, and then all of a sudden, they just seem to stop doing it. I'm sure I probably said it about you yeah. in, in some of your <laughs> fights, but what, what, what happens there? Uh, sometimes the lack of concentration, sometimes it's like if you're doing something that's working so effectively, sometimes they can get bored and switched off, or sometimes the tiredness kicks in, they're not thinking anymore, and they're working the subconscious mind rather than what the corners told them in the game plan. 
So what she needs to do is stay switched on the game plan. The corner is going to have to keep drilling in her head the game plan and get her back to her boxing so she doesn't forget and forget what was working for and what they've been working on in the gym. And to the final 30 seconds of round six. Majanovic again just kind of marauding forward, looking for those long hooks to the body. I think at this point, Sandstorm's also got to bring the right hand behind the jab as well to give her something to respect, because now she's starting to just walk through certain shots. She's now got to start doubling it up or one-twos to give her something to respect so she don't just keep walking forward and thinking that she can just come forward and let her hands go and throw combinations. And you look at the swelling on the right-hand side of the forehead there, and you've got to wonder what kind of effect that has because that is it's not looking that's good. really really ugly that's yeah, going to slip bad. down she's going to have a close fight tomorrow no question yeah, about that 100%. but just how they control this for the next few rounds uh seven eight nine and ten she's got still left they've got control that in the corner very well they can ice it down the best and treat it the best they can between the rounds for her to go out so it doesn't affect or swell any further to cause any uh um, vision blurs or any uh disorientation to the eye well, you can get a good look at it there. They're just smoothing a bit of Vaseline over it. And bit by bit, just every millimetre or so per round, it's, it is slipping. I don't think it's going to close the eye before the end of this fight because no. we've got four two-minute rounds to go remaining. But that will be that will be a, a state tomorrow. Yeah. So you just got to look out, make sure there's no more Second head down, on that round side. Seven. So into the seventh, Mojanovic kicks things off with a nice, stiff-looking jab there. Yeah, so she's got better head movement now. She's working her head movement a bit better on the inside, and that's what she's got to do. Don't just put the earmuffs on and sit there. She's, she's got to move the head with it and let her hands go, and I think she's doing that better now. And there she goes. She's, she's landed a beautiful left hook on the inside there. There's a nice combination came back, though, from Mojanovic. He's doing some good work when they get up close like that. And again there, as soon as the referee ordered them to box on, she just got the gloves up Mojanovic and almost ran into Sandstrom. Yeah, she's built up loads of confidence. She's feeling strong now. She's came on strong in the later rounds and looking full of energy. I'm just hoping that Sandstorm hasn't uh, shot most of her load early in the fight. I'd say at halfway she was 4-1 up Sandstrom. She was. All she needs to do really is just win another round or two, and I feel that she could see it, see it out, and, and win this fight. She just doesn't want to be losing all the rounds from here on, because you don't know how the judges are looking at it and how they looked at all the, all the rounds early. So you just want to make sure you, you finish strong and convincing at least a round or two more, and I feel she should have it in the bag. cracking together on the inside again there as they both just plant their feet pretty wide and look to and look to swing there's that jab from Sandstrom telling you that she's backing up it's not as effective and just got caught by a couple there from Mojanovic again as she's got that that guard up but just Dead leading in. in beautiful that's what I mean about bringing a backhand in now she gave her something to respect and that's what she's got to do she's got to move her head and start throwing in some of the bigger shots off the back of the jab now there's a beautiful right hand near the end of that uh, seventh round just then well that's the scene at your call an unseasonably hot October the 29th, it was about 20 degrees in London today, I couldn't believe it when I it was, left It was the very house. hot, it was very hot. I went training earlier, I came up to the gym, I was like, it's actually hot today. <laughs> <laughs> Sandstrom looking a little bit tired in the corner there, I just uh, hope she gets her second win to uh, pull through for the remainder of the last couple, couple rounds. She was very much in control in those first three. I think the head clash. Corners, 10 seconds. Good in the fourth. And since then, it's been a more even kind of a contest. And yeah. encouragement there for Mojanovic. She Second gets up her first four. She's eight. got a half and half record. She boxes a lot on the road. She's been in with some really good fighters. But she'll know that there's an opportunity here. If she could just keep grinding, keep letting those hands go, take at least a couple of these final three rounds, all three of them, and she could be in business. Nice left hand on the inside there. 
from Sandstrom. Sandstrom's come out a lot better. She's sticking to her boxing now. She's jabbing, she's changing her angles, she's letting her hands go, and this is a lot better from her. She's not getting involved in sitting there as a sitting target now. See, she's popping the jab off beautiful. There's the one twos I was talking about for her to respect, and she moves off. corners instructed her very well because she came out of a, very, a good game plan this uh, round sandstorm and sticking to her boxing just dipped Ooh. underneath the left hand well there and then looked for the right to the body sandstorm and that's the head movement I was talking about it's good to have the head movement as well between it and not just being a sitting target she's boxed very well this is her best round in a few rounds I've seen from her yeah, she's nullified Marjanovic, hasn't she? Who's who struggled really to get too much off. Right hand into the body there from Sandstrom. And when they're really tightening up close like that, it's difficult for the taller fighter to it's serve well. really to find enough, enough room. There's that jab. A couple of times she's done that, she's thrown the jab and moves straight onto the shoulder because it makes yeah. it almost impossible to, throw to counter. Bit. Yeah, of course. And it's, it's funny because she's the shorter fighter, but she's got the better jab and the, the better long shot. She's actually better at working at range. swelling on the left hand side of the forehead as well now I think by the look of it so she'll certainly know she's been in a fight tomorrow <laughs> Sandstrom <laughs> to say the least <laughs> there she, she boxed very well that round and I think that's a Sandstrom round I think that's her first round in about last three that she's won and this is what she needed just a round like that maybe one more and I think she should secure this fight it's getting the rest in in the corner there, the end swell comes out. That's been doing some work for the last the last few rounds. I'm always interested about what it's like in the corner between rounds because we're deep in, into what is a pretty physically demanding fight here. By the time you sat down, he's got the trainers probably got about 40 seconds yeah. to work with you. I mean, how yeah. how easy is it to take anything in? It depends. I was having a conversation with someone earlier about this. Is sometimes the trainer doesn't want to overload a fighter. You're tired, you're trying to recover, you're trying to get your breather back, and you're trying to regroup. So at the same oh, time, you've got to do seconds. all the fundamentals. So the information you're taking in has to be minimal. If a trainer loads you with loads of information, most of it's going to go out of your head. You've got to Second do out. minimal information to, to, for the fighter to take that in. That's what I've always thought. You've got to keep it. You've got to keep it simple. Some fighters, some trainers will use kind of buzzwords, almost a sort of slang that you, you learn from each other in the gym, which might not mean much to other people, but a couple of words can mean a lot to the fighter. Majanovic is looking to throw that right hand off the back foot, and maybe the last thing that they tell you is the one that'll that you'll remember. stay with you. Yeah, exactly that. And a lot of the stuff they're telling you, they would have probably told you over the period of your camp time and time again in sparring in the gym so it's just about reminding you in uh, come fight night when something's going wrong to remember what they've been learning in the gym um, right now is not the time to learn it's just the reminders and getting back to what you've um, been practicing the whole time in your training camps bit of swelling over the left eye on the corner of the left eye there of Mijanovic that's been there for two or three rounds but in these head clashes somehow she has come off much much better than Sandstrom it's inexplicable really how sometimes that happens and very animated corner the Majanovic corner the fighter shot. there just beautiful short right to hand it. there on Sandstorm she came in she chopped the right hand down and landed it perfectly And the supervisor to our right hand side is having to tell the trainer just to try and take it down a notch which you don't often see in pro boxing you see it in amateur boxing quite often but in pro boxing they generally left quite it get on with it left yeah. hand there from sandstrom I don't really know what his problem is, to be honest, because I think his fight is giving pretty much everything to carry there. Fight. I think what he kept complaining about is he's complaining that um, Sandstorm's holding and she's getting uh, the blame for it. She's saying that basically she's not initiating the holding. He's absolutely screaming at the referee there as he yeah. comes through the ropes. <laughs> he's not a happy man right now. He's, he's not really not. <laughs> In terms of the head clashes and, and some of the 
and sending rough stuff on the inside. I mean, I think they've been kind of... If anything, Marjanovic has been slightly more to blame on that yeah, front, I think, than course. Sandstrom. With the head clashes, Sandstrom is shorter. She drops her knees. Yeah. She does come in with that head quite low. low. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she drops her head quite low. Um, and then Sandstorm, um, sometimes she's getting her work smothered a little bit, but sometimes to catch her little breather, she's tying her off on the other side, which is quite smart tactically. And I think the other corner is getting frustrated that she's getting blamed for all the holding. But earlier on in the contest, as they say, like mud stick, she corner, was holding excessively. And now the uh, referee has seen that. And now every time they're holding, she will get the blame for it moving forward. Second down, set, and final round. So set the final round between these two. Touch of gloves, somewhat reluctantly there. Maybe Sandstrom in the in the white and Turquoise Mojanovic in the black. Good left hand there from Sandstrom on the inside. This has been a physical, grueling kind of a fight. That head clash in the first half of the fight, not to be underestimated. That the kind of effect that can have. It hasn't seemed to take anything out of her sails, Sandstrom. But until something like that happens to you, and I don't think it has in her career up until this point, you never really know how you're going to react. Right hand into the body there from Sandstrom. The WBA Super Flyweight Champion, by the way, is Clara Leskarat, 7-0 Argentinian. He won the title back in June. Sandstrom's at number 11 at the minute, and this will take that ranking up, I'm sure. Marjanovic looking to try and finish strongly here. Both given put everything on the line. Both exhausted. <laughs> uh, they're both going to feel this tomorrow. They're going to be exhausted. It shows they both want it as bad as each other. They're leaving it all in there. There's that jab. Plan to get upwards into the final 30 seconds. Beautiful jab. Now she's got back to the jab that she should have been doing throughout some of the rounds she neglected. And there's that jab, and again just moves straight in off the back of it and looks to tie Marjanovic up. That's worked pretty well. Just lets her go and then throws her left hand. Good Ooh. right hand there from Mojanovic, and I think Ooh. she might have touched she down hurts. there, Sandstrom. Ooh, but the referee hasn't given she was the a knockdown. I think the glove might yeah. have just scraped the canvas there. We'll need to have another look at it. But that was a good heavy shot there from Mojanovic, which landed right at the end of the fight. Now, if that had been given, and she doesn't look all that no. steady on her feet here. See, that's a shot Mojanovic. again. Sandstrom rather, let's have a look. Oh, oh. It was hard to tell. It looked like it might have been a clubbing shot around the back of the head. I'm not I sure think she did touch down, though. No. The, the knee kind of loosened a bit, didn't it? Yeah. And, and legs the gloves buckled went a bit. towards the canvas. Yeah, legs definitely buckled, but she didn't touch down. I'm not sure if she was seriously hurt or if she's more exhausted with the shot, which made her legs give way. I think it was probably more fatigue. There yeah. wasn't anything that really obviously Hit. landed in there. Her knee kind of gave way a bit. I definitely is... agree. Definitely fatigue, I think. Uh, and she'll show them, them signs from the last few rounds, a little bit of fatigue. Um, but it, it's a, it was a grueling contest with her opponent coming forward heavily towards her and grinding her down from, I think, around round five, four or five onwards. Um, she really pushed the paces on her and dictated the pace. And that's the first time that she's been 10 rounds, sounds from as well. Wow. Yeah, if one remembers their first 10 rounders, is always a more mental thing than physical, because you can do the 10 rounds in the gym, but it's when you get under the lights and you've got to do your first 10 rounds, um, mentally it's exhausting. And that's when he was calmed down a bit, actually. Yeah, the, treat, the, the corner treated that um, very well. I'm very impressed the way the corner treated it, um, and I'm glad it didn't swell up or any serious injuries looked like it was going to arise from it. So, just waiting for our MC to pick up the score sheet down at ringside. We've had ten good rounds there. Sandstrom just pacing. The ring above us as Ryanovic tries to get those gloves off.
which is not proving all that easy at the minute. But there's that belt on the right-hand side there, that black WBA Intercontinental belt. Beautiful belt. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Judge Charles Cookley scores the contest 96-93. Judge Howard Foster scores the contest 97-92. And Judge Mark Bates scores the contest 97-92. For your winner, by unanimous decision, from Sydney, Australia. Sandstrom gets it, those scores tell us that there was a point deducted, we weren't absolutely sure, we thought there was, but the point was deducted, and so in terms of rounds, it's gone 6-4 with one judge, 7-3 with the other two, and that's basically in line with what we saw, yeah. she dominated by the halfway point, Sandstrom, towards the start of the second half of the fight, that was where Marjanovic got her rounds, and then yeah. Sandstrom, just, just as you said, just, just put a stamp on it and made absolutely sure towards yeah, the Yeah, she, she had a very strong start and she had a very strong finish. A couple of the rounds she let slip away, and uh, some of the, the other ones was quite close. And it's kind of exactly how we reflected. She lost a few of the rounds early in the, mid, in the middle rounds, and then she obviously regrouped and uh, got back to her boxing. So I think the scorecards reflect exactly what we said, really. Well, just having a few photos with that belt there. Unexpectedly heavy, those belts. Oh, very heavy. So if you see a promoter and he's got a fighter who's undisputed and he's posing for the photos <laughs> with all four of them there and he has to do it for any length of time, it's not that easy. It's yeah. not that easy. I've seen any of them sweating a bit in Katie Taylor fight weeks. Oh, yeah, they're very heavy, them belts. I never realised at first. I, w uh, I went to an actual football game and done a uh, carry, I had to carry through my belts on the pitch. I was struggling. <laughs> OK, well, she's got it over her shoulder. Let's hear from her now. Lynn and the new. You've got the belt there. How are you feeling right now? Right now, I'm just top of the world. You know, we travelled from Australia here to London to uh, win this belt. So I, I, I think that speaks for itself. Like, I really, really wanted it so badly. Now, talk me through that fight. That was a tough, gruelling 10 rounds for you. It was a really tough 10 rounds. I mean, I've been sparring uh, former world champions to get prepared for this, you know, like over 230 rounds, but I guess nothing can compare to what it is to really be in the ring, but I got the win, I got the win comfortably. I feel like this was one of the smartest fights I've had, so I'm happy with that. How did you cope with the sort of the holding in the fight, there was a head clash round three, you got a bit of swelling on the forehead. Yeah. How did you deal with that throughout the fight? Look, I'm extremely tough. My my coach is Italian. He's training me like crazy. So, you know, I, I, I can push through anything, anything I feel like. It, the pressure to win this fight was massive, you know? So yeah, I'm, I'm just happy. <laughs> what does this win mean, mean to you? Coming over from Australia, you know, winning it here. Uh, you know what? In the beginning, a lot of people doubted me. This is my third third belt win in a row. Uh, I proved a lot of things tonight, but mostly for myself and my coach. Like I'm just over the moon. <laughs> now, Australian women's boxing is flourishing at the moment. How does it feel to be right in amongst that? Look, now I can say that I'm actually amongst all of the girls. Uh, the girls are doing great. You know, Ebony and Shannon having the fight over here in the UK. It's massive for women's boxing, and to be able to to you know, be amongst those women and be inspired what, by what they are doing, it's just incredible. So what is next for you? Who are you wanting? Next for me, you know, I'm gonna start uh, coming for the top people in this division. Uh, I feel like that's where I belong. Obviously, this wasn't my best performance, but I was just here to win tonight. I will go back to the gym on Monday. For the first time, I'm having my family here to watch me box. I don't know if they watch much or close their eyes. They're not a boxing family, but having them here, seeing me actually win and seeing what I'm all about is, is just amazing. So I will be back in the gym Monday, improving what I need to improve. Well, congratulations. Look forward to seeing you out very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well done. Right, our fifth fight is ready to go. The fighters are ready to make their walk, so I'll hand over to our MC. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, the action continues now in our next panel in the light heavyweight division. So please welcome back to the ring and the red corner.
Harry Matthews. Harry Matthews, another real good away corner fighter, is gracing your call tonight. And you can see by the shape he's in there, much like Lee Hallett, this is somebody who stays in the gym, keeps himself in excellent condition. And for that reason, is always able to give a good account of himself. He's boxed for a central area title, an English title in the past. They didn't go his way against Christian Kitsiona and Nick Blackwell. And make no mistake, Matthews is a good operator. And he's in very good shape. Very good shape. Ladies you see he's done the, the work in the gym. He's definitely in good shape. Welcome to the ring and the blue corner. Balra. in the house to see him too and I will have a quick chat with him he was here nice and early and he's someone you sparked he's someone you sparked Barrett's car isn't he I do believe he shared, shared the, uh, the ring and sparring he claims as much anyway you're looking slightly <laughs> uncertain I'm not too sure you know I sat back down a lot of people come through the door I'm not too sure I can't remember him right now but it could be due to all the punches in boxing <laughs> But Matthews has got an away corner fighter's record, but as discussed, he is extremely capable. This is the 14th fight of the year for him. He's been stopped by very few people. You're looking at fighters like Jamie Cox, Jermaine Brown, Jimmy Kelly a little while ago as well. Started in the home corner actually. And then when he got to 11 4 and 1, it was at that point that he headed for the away corner. All of you, gentlemen, distinguished guests, our next battle of the evening is the lead in association with TMT Promotions and Into Boxing, proudly present four rounds of boxing in the light heavyweight division. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, supervisor here at ringside, Mr. Dead Des Reese. Our timekeeper, Mr. Ashley McGill, and our referee in charge of the action when the bell rings, Mr. Mark Bates. So introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, his official weight on the scales, 13 stone. An experienced fighter with over 80 bouts, wearing the black and white shorts from York, presenting Harry Matthews. His opponent tonight standing across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Official weight on the scales, 12 stone, 8 pounds. He enters the ring with a record, a perfect one. Two victories, no defeats, wearing the white and yellow shorts from Feltham, presenting the Rush Like every fight we've seen tonight, I think this is going to be interesting. We saw Jean de Souza Freire giving Dean Gardner a real run, Lee Hallett testing out Owen Gidman, Logan Paling bringing everything he got against Tommy Murphy, the fight we've just had, and Matthews. Second out, to test round out one. Balraj Kara here, he's 2 0, 27 years old. He's in the white, blue, and gold, boxing out of Felton. He sold plenty of tickets, which is always a bonus for a young fighter. That really is the key to getting nice and active early on if you're not picked up by one of the big promoters. Did a bit of karate, a bit of kickboxing before he took to boxing. Had a decent enough amateur career. Physically, they're quite different, aren't they? He's, yeah. he, he's more your kind of build, Cara. Tall and that kind of, as the nickname for you suggests, that maybe spidery strength. <laughs> yes. is that bit shorter and very solid. Yeah. 100% he's more compact more compact muscle but um, you know the muscles never obviously account for people's abilities and you see guys like Deontay Wilder he's not the biggest of guys but hits very hard so can always be deceptive taller fighters particularly light heavy seems to have seems to have a few because you're quite slim you look like you are anyway but what he's the same he kind of looks like he's slim when you see him on tv but then when you stand next to you and you stand next to him yeah. you realize that that you're not but you've got that kind of 
that sort of elasticity, that, that whipcord strength where you can just sling the shots in without really without yeah, really I'm loading up. You, you get a lot of different shapes and sizes. You do get a lot of stuff. You do. Because remember, it's not a bodybuilding competition. Muscles don't win the fights. It's about a balance of speed, agility and power. So it's about getting the right build for your body. Matthews with a right-hand lead. Cara with a right to Ooh, the body. good body shot. That was, we could hear that one. Echo around ringside. Oh, boxing very well. He's going to the head and going downstairs straight after that right hook to the body seems the key for him. He throws it very nice. At the back of the jab, he'll throw that jab, step there we in. Go. Back to the right hook to the body, jab, then right hook to the body. Oh, got count with a good left hook there. Trying to find a route through the uppercut there, Carl. I can see why, because oh. Matthews comes in and he just leans in a touch. Oh, got to be careful with the heads there. He's bringing it here, Matthews, though, as we expected of that course. he would. When you've got as much experience as him and you see someone at 2-0, and yeah. You want to test them, you want to see how they're really built, because you know, you're not really tested 2-0, and 3-0, and early doors, you know, and um, it's these sort of competitions what really let you know what the pro game's around, because sometimes their records doesn't reflect their abilities, so when they're ready to turn it on, hopefully it's not the day you're in there, they can really cause some problems. As of now, as we're seeing him letting his hands go on the inside. Good right hand there from Matthews, just caught Carr as he was opening out. Didn't cause him any real problems. Right hand into the body again there from Kara. Bow goes at the end of the opening round. Beats an opening round as well. He's got the Hollands backing him. John Holland and Harry Holland, Barad Kara. Very experienced man. Works full time as a roofer, which is. Pretty physical game to be in and fit your training in around. Oh, I guess you don't have to use strength and conditioning work. <laughs> Did you work towards the start of your career or were you always no, full-time? I was always full-time. Um, I decided to try and even go full-time near the end of my amateur career because I realised boxing at a high level, you've got to dedicate yourself to the cause and grow. I didn't have a massive amateur pedigree, so I had a lot of making up to do of my experience once I hit the pro Four side. Corners, so. 10 seconds. You've got a fight coming up, haven't you? November the 26th against Ricard Pelotti. Second yeah. out, yes. round two. Full training camp for that right now. I'm looking forward to it. You know he brings it. Oh, I think that's... We'll talk about it a bit as the, as the evening goes on when we get a few breaks, but I think it's the perfect fight for you, really. Yeah, 100%. First saw him in a golden contract I covered with Sky. We had all sorts of fun with Ricard Pelotti. <laughs> knocked out Stephen Ward to kick things off. Yeah and just gave us full value every time he got in there. So you do know what you'll get from him, but he's a good, good level fighter. Yeah, he hurt everyone in that tournament. A couple of stoppages. What, the one he didn't stop, a few eight counts. So we know he definitely can hit. He's strong and he's a solid opponent. Into round number two. Left hook just catches Cara a little bit high on the head. He's tall, but he doesn't really look to keep it on the inside, does he? He throws that jab and then moves in behind it yeah. and likes it up close. I think because of where he's trying to work his body shots, he tries to get in close to keep himself safe as he goes down to the body. <laughs> Matthews has tried that right-hand lead a few times. Follows it in, looks to get onto that shoulder. Nice, got the jab to right to the body. That's it, that's how he should be boxing, especially if he's stamped, he should uh, work to his assets and his ability. Matthews is short and compact, so you don't want to be drawn into his game. No, you picked up on it right at the start that he'd throw that nice long jab, step and throw a nice long right hand to the body. Yeah. And then just get back out the on the inside, on the outside. Good left hand there from Cora. You should capitalise on that, he's hurt enough he is. You can capitalise on that. Really landed that clean as Matthews was just coming in as well. And you're right, he's not absolutely steady here, Matthews. Not, no. Not yet. He hasn't fully recovered. 
and he's giving him that window to recover right now. <laughs> there we go, good shot again. Nice slip, left hook. Well delivered, picked up the elbow nicely. Good bend in the arm, proper left hook, and he's showing us something in this second round here, Kara, because he's put Matthews right back into his shell, hasn't he? Yeah, As you he said, has. courtesy of that, that left uppercut, he's just looking for the end of the round here, Matthews, really. Yeah, he is. He's on the back foot now, he's backpedaling, he's trying to keep his distance, and he doesn't really want to engage at the moment. And I think he's hurt a little bit, and he wants to see this round out, but he's tucking up. Looks for the uppercut again there, Kara, with the right hand this time. I'm not sure if it landed absolutely clean, but he just slipped off to his right hand side, came up with it. He's trying a good sense of recovery. Um, of, he's trying a good sense of Arsenal, um, different shot varieties. He's showing, he's showing um, good abilities here, he is. Saw a decent right uppercut there from, from Matthews. There's that double jab right to the body again, kept it nice and long. Oh, there's that left slip, left hook. Corner, the, uh, uh, 10 left seconds. Flush on the button. Seconds out, round three. I mentioned he got to a decent standard with his amateur query box for London. Boxer Harren Gay won the London Novices, quarterfinals of the Nationals at the, at the under 20s, I think, under 20 bounce. There's that jab, just bearing it up, goes up top and then down to the body. Beautiful. It's like he's warming into the contest now. Oh, nice left hook uppercuts. It's an interesting little move he has there, Matthews. Every now and again, he, he really springs into that right-hand lead, which can take people by surprise a bit sometimes. Yeah, he closed the distance very quick. The fighters take it as a bit of an insult to get landed on by right-hand lead. They used to back in the day. If somebody yeah. threw a right-hand lead and landed, you know, you really felt that they were, yeah. they were disrespecting <laughs> you. 100%. A right hand lead, I find a, a shot that does land quite often because it usually catches fighters off guard. And just looking for that uppercut there, Cara. Didn't quite have room for it. There's that double jab again there. And Belraz Cara just spins around that front foot. Matthews, nice and tight. Oh, beautiful. Luckily he kept his chin down because he, he nearly got caught with a left hook himself. He rolled it and managed to come back with one of his own. And Matthews is getting very aggressive now on the inside. With Cara just tying him up on the ropes. He's locking those arms and looking to turn him, get out of that corner into the final minute of... Round three. He's done well to kick back the centre of the ring and count him very well in the middle of that ring. Beautiful shot. Oh, he's got caught with a left hook of his own there. Right hand to the body, and just after he landed it there, Cara, that was when Matthews came up with that with that left hook. And again, he almost they're, lands it there. They're both exchanging left hooks quite often now. I think they're both looking for that big left hook. They've both got to be careful as they're throwing it, because the other one's looking to throw the exact same shot. Matthews seems to be looking for it. As soon as he sees Cara look for that right hand to the body, that's when he seems to be throwing it, because when he pulls out off that right hand to the body, he can tend to bring his chin up in the air a bit here. Yeah, and he drops his right hand a little bit, and I think that's what Matthew's seen, he drops his right hand on the exchange while he's looking to catch him with the left hook, so he keeps rolling, and I think he's seen a defensive flaw there. Again, just a big swing towards the end of the round, and that was another good round. <laughs> Interesting fight, this. Matthews, he was buzzed in that second round, you're yeah, right, he, he definitely was. 
went into his shell a little bit, but he's got himself back into it in that third round. And I think he has spotted something there, which is that Kara, when he lands that, that long right hand, he can be a little bit slow to bring it back. Yeah, 100%. And that's what he's looking for, that, that left up over the top almost. So these two Thank you. brought together no to touch the start of the fourth final round. And final round. It's been a good watch this again. We've had some good fights tonight. Three more to come after this. Matthews is going to go after Belraj Kara in this fourth round. Absolutely no question about that. He jumps the body there from Kara. Oh, well, there we go. Now, beautiful left hook. And Kara's boxed a beautiful contest, and I think he showed a lot tonight. He's kept his shape quite well. He showed a good variety of punches and dominated from the centre, really. It's been a good performance. This is his third fight in a row here. In March, he won every round against Frano Radnic. And then on July the 2nd, went 3-1 against Callum Ibe. And this is a good outing for him. He'll learn plenty from this. One thing I've noticed already, he's already corrected that hand placement of his right hand. Um, he's a lot tighter on his right hand to avoid getting caught with that left hook. I'm not sure if the corner had a word of him, but he's definitely uh, corrected that error he had in the last round. Keeps looking for it though, Matthews, every single time he can. Nice one, two to the body there for Kara. Targeting the southern area title. This is listed at light heavyweight. I think maybe when it comes to titles, he'll be boxing at super middle, or possibly yet to be decided. 168 or 175, quite a big, big gap between the two of them. Yes, yeah, there's a massive gap. I remember when I moved up in weight, it took me a while to grow into the weight. Well, I remember that well. Yeah. At the Millennium Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> against Frank Bullione. Yeah. About a week's notice, I think it was. Yeah, five days' notice. I took it on the Sunday. I trained two days for it for my first 12 round on. It was a good experience, and after that is when I developed and moved up into the light weight division properly. Sometimes it's hard to say no to opportunities. No, I remember hearing about that, and I didn't really have too much doubt that you would take it. <laughs> it was ridiculously short notice, and <laughs> as you say, stepping up in weight as well. But I think the fact that he was someone you knew pretty well and you sparred yeah. a lot probably helped. Yeah, we sparred a lot of rounds. It's always about familiarity like in boxing. It's about being comfortable at the same time. But you've noticed throughout the whole career, I've stepped up quite quick. Oh, this is this is this is set fire in the last 10 seconds. This part was a very good contest. They both gave it there. It was a good fight, that very good fight. And like everything that we've seen so far tonight, very very competitive. And Cara's going to get the decision there. I'm pretty confident yeah. about that. He's won the fight, but Matthews has asked some serious questions of him. When you see an away corner fighter come in the shape that he does, that. That Lee Hallett does, that, that all the fighters we've had on the right hand side of the bill have tonight, Logan Paling, Sean de Sousa Freire. You know that you've got to start well, you can't give them any openings or any encouragement no. because if you do, you can be in trouble. Yeah, you can be in trouble, especially over four rounds. If you let one or two rounds slip, you've only got 50% of the contest left, left to grab back, you've got to drop them or something. So you've got to start fast in these four round competitions. They can slip between your fingers very quick. kind of rhythm about him, just nice and loose car a little bit of movement just off the balls of the feet nothing too extravagant okay let's get the decision 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, after four rounds of action, we go to our referee's scorecard. Referee Mark Bates scores the contest 39-37 for your winner from Felton, Alred Parra! So Barrett Carr gets it 39-37, so there's a round win in there for Harry Matthews, 3-1. That translates 2, and I think the right-hand side has won a round in pretty much every fight that we've seen so far tonight, and that gives you an idea of, of the matching. They've been, they've been well matched, and at 2-0, it'll have taken a lot from that, from that fight, because Getting rounds in earlier on is, is what it's about. I mean, we mentioned your debut where it was all over in the blink of an eye, and yeah. you get the win and you get it out of the way, but it's a bit of an anti-climax, yeah, I guess, exactly. probably. Yeah, of course. You, it's good to start with a bang, because then you snatch yourself into the scene very well. After that, the tough opponent, after that done, I had the four rounds complete, and that's when I started building my experience, really. When you get the rounds out is when you really get the experience. So, yeah, the fighters need that. They need the rounds. OK, well, here he comes. So plenty of tickets, like I said. He's a popular, popular man. Uh, I think it was a good, pretty, pretty, pretty good performance. Done, stuck to the game plan. Didn't have to overcomplicate it. Just stick to the boxing bread and butter. Now you look like you were enjoying yourself in that. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm very calm and relaxed. I don't really get flustered or anything. But when I'm in there, I'm in my rhythm and element. Now, you were having a little talk with your team after the fight. What were they saying? <laughs> so I've done everything perfect. <laughs> no, no, just uh, stick to the game plan, done what I could do, and a few little bits here and there that you could do, but it's all part of the game is. Now, that's three wins, three fights this year, four rounds. Are you looking to step up in the rounds next? Oh, definitely, 100%. We're not here to fight nobody. We want to step up and win titles. Now, you bring an army of fans with you. Could you hear them when you are in there? I could, unfortunately. I could have concentrated properly. <laughs> How good is it to have this much support so early on in your career? It's great. It's, it's great to have a good... Uh, I've got good support from all my friends and family around here, but uh, as everyone knows, Indians have big family, so uh, it's a great support it is. Perfect. And how good was it to be here fighting in York Hall, an atmosphere like this? It's always great fighting in York Hall. There's never a dull moment, is there? I like the whole close-in vicinity, the crowds on top of you. is. It's great. Well, it was a great performance. Well done. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we'll keep the action coming. We'll move on to our next fight. Over to our MC. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, our next bout of the evening. Please welcome first into the ring and to the red corner, Bojana Libesuski. Six rounds in the lightweight division we've got here. This is Bojana Libyshevska, who I've seen quite a bit. She's been in with some good, good fighters. Gone down the stretch with the likes of Athena Thorsland, now world champion Nina Meinke. He's fought for a world title, former European champion Terry Harper, world champion Catherine Defenders, Benka Hermes. Again, all of them have held world titles. Only stopped by Tasha Jonas and Harper. And it's had a win here, actually, a couple of years ago against a fighter called Sankita Burley. So we know what we'll get from her. And her opponent, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, please welcome to the ring at the blue corner, Holly Whitworth. Of tickets sold by Harley Whitwell as well. If you recognize the surname, that's because she's a sister of Shona, who's a, a GB fighter. I saw Shona at the World Championships in Istanbul back in May. She's boxed in the recent Europeans, but Harley has taken the plunge as a pro, a good amateur herself. Got deep into tournaments, final of the elites in the youths. The last eight of the seniors in 2021. 20, I saw that fight actually. You got to the semis. 
Ridgely, losing to Sasha Hickey down at the University of East London in, in Docklands, which has got some support. Isaac Cornwall went well with the chef's cut. He was trodden these boards many, many times from Poland. It's a pro debut for Whitwell and all the pressure that comes with that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, leading in association with TM40 Promotions and into boxing, presents six rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, supervisor here at ringside, Mr. Des Reese. Our timekeeper for the spouse, Mr. Ashley McGill. And our referee in charge of the action inside the ring, Mr. Chaz Copley. So introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, her official weight on the scales, Maggie Stone, 13 international boxer wearing the black and yellow shorts from Poland presenting Bozhana Klibezuska Her opponent tonight standing across the ring boxing out of the blue corner her official weight on the stairs nine strong pounds tonight she makes her professional Chaz Coakley, our man in the middle, so six two-minute rounds here. And that's Harley Whitwell making her professional debut, trained by Dan Steve. Resplendent in that second right. round. We have Libyshevska from Sosnowiec in Poland. Nice jab to start things off with there from Whitwell. Starting off a good start here. Keeping her range quite well and working behind that jab. Looking for a right hand over the top there, but Lubaszewska able to block that oh, one. Good good hand shot. side, good just snuffing around the back of the guard there. Oh, good shot. She likes to chop that right hand down after the jab. It's a beautiful shot. She made a very good start here, Whitwell. Very positive, holding the centre of the ring, dictating terms, which is often what you would expect in this kind of a contest, but she's landed clean a couple of times on Lubaszewska already. Good left hand on the inside there too. Good shot, good punch variety there, good combination, working well to the body. Didn't quite find that long looping right hand that time. Has done a couple of times in a round already. Just let your friend know to go around the back. He's waiting there for you. Okay. Right. Just text him and let him know to come around the back. Okay. Right. Looking for the jab there, Rick. Well, just firing it up. And again, there, just to try and bomb with that big overhand. Lubyshevsko, I think, is, is wise to that one now. The blood coming from the end of the nose there is with Lubyshevsky, not absolutely sure, but she's only quite clean actually a few times. Good times. I think she's going to stop stoppage. I think if she carries on boxing like this, I think she can force the stoppage. Well, that would put her in good company. As I mentioned, good opening round there, solid first two minutes of her pro career for Harvey Whitwell. Looking good at the moment. I hope she can keep this pace up. Especially with all the pressure of your debut. You know, everyone's come to watch you. It's 
a lot of weight on your shoulders. It feels like it's your world title fight, your first fight. Well, she sold a lot of tickets. It's an aspect that people are always aware of, that if you start on the small halls, then to be able to sell tickets is as simple as that, or you just won't get on shows, or you might get on a show, but you won't make any money, no. you end up paying for your opponent. Exactly. At the end of the day, professional Four amateur minutes, boxing is different. Seconds. It's a business professional boxing, so it's all got to make sense for everyone, the promoters, as well as yourself. Second the round, round two. Fighters early in their career, but they needed to get fights, basically, they were paying to fight rather than being paid because they'd have to come up with the, the fee for the opponent. Sometimes you have to make that kind of investment. Yeah. Depends on how much you believe in yourself. Good left hand again there from Whitwell and Ribajewska just made to back pedal. Yeah. There you go, there's the right hand. hand. There's there's the right hand. hand. This is what I was talking about. Yeah, there you go. That's the stoppage I was talking about. Oh, that was a tremendous shot. shot. looking good. She, I, I, I knew she'd get the stoppage with that chopping right hand. I, I believe she was going to get that stoppage. It was, it was just a terrific shot. Back to up to the right. She looked very good in her debut today. Very impressive. She worked well behind the jab and chopped that right hand down multiple times in the first round and it paid off in the second round. It absolutely did. Yeah. Rocked her back onto the heels a couple of times yeah. with that left hand. Very, 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 very good performance. Very impressive. That was a heavy shot. That's what I mean. Just very, touching very with the jab, judge the distance. Touched her, touched her. Chopped that right hand again. Perfectly precise. Perfect shot. She's got such a beautiful punch right. He kept her shape very well. Hand placement perfect. Sized her up and chopped it. It was interesting that right from the start, she was looking for that right hand, not straight, it was just a, a little bit wide, curve, a couple of yeah. times she's thrown it. It was chopped down at an angle, a 45 degree angle. It was beautiful. And not many people do that to Libyshevska, as I mentioned, Tasha Jonas has done it, Terry Harper has done it, she's only been stopped four times though, in what is now 50 defeats, and you think about some of the fighters she's been in with who haven't managed to do it, but, but Jonas and Harper, the two names I picked out, those being names that people watching will know, we both know that they've, we all know that they've gone on to become world champions, so that, yeah. is, that is a start. She's looking promising, I think, she's got a promising future based off what I just saw of her debut. Obviously, further tests to go throughout her career. Ladies and gentlemen, start. distinguished guests, at a time of 31 seconds, the second round, our referee stops the contest. Your winner by TKO from St. Ives, Holly Whitman. Big smiles from the pair of them, and she will have enjoyed every single second of that because that was no knockover job. Libyshevska was absolutely expected to give her the 12 minutes there. The six two-minute rounds in full. I would have bet a substantial amount of money on that happening before that fight took place because of Libyshevska's record. I've gone a bit now, it's fair to say that, but as I said, it's a high caliber of fighter that has managed to stop her. So that was, well, it was impressive. And she sends all of her fans home very, very happy, and there are plenty of them. Let's see if we can hear her above the noise they're making. Holly, you're a bit emotional, but a successful debut there. How are you feeling? Amazing. Like, I, I feel like I've waited my whole life for that moment, so yeah, I'm really pleased. And it was fantastic. You got her out there 31 seconds in the second round. Yes. Was that the plan? Um, well, my dad told me that uh, she's only been stopped like two or three times, so we wasn't planning on it. We we're just going to take it easy, but obviously my hard work's paid off. The strength, you know, showed when I was in there and, yeah, I got her out early, so, yeah, I'm pleased. Now, we do have to talk about the noise and the atmosphere yeah. in here. When your name was called, I mean, you brought quite a crowd with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah we brought a whole army. Like, we come from St Ives, so... A bit, bit of a track away, but yeah, like I've got the best people around me, so that's why I got so emotional because yeah, I just I 
a couple of years ago I wouldn't have even imagined to be in this position so it's just a blessing really yeah what does it mean for you having got your pro debut under your belt now um well I'm I'm only 22 years old so you know I'm with my dad dad's my coach my manager everything else so come in <laughs> come in dad so the plan's just to take it slow, you know, I want to peak at the right time and I want a long, successful career. So, yeah, that's that's it really. Now we've got that out of the way and hopefully just keep really active. So next next year, hopefully I have four, four or five fights and, yeah, just see how we get on. How proud are you right now? Of course, you know, I've known this for years, that she's meant for the big stage. Um, you know, I've got a family of these things coming through. And, um, yeah, you know, she was nervous tonight because, she, you know, all the people and that's the first time she's had that. And what a crowd. I mean, they're amazing. And there's twice as many people who come out next time. I guarantee that. This girl's meant for the big stage. She will go as far as she wants to go. I'll tell you now, she's been boxing since she was five years old. The amateurs was never for her. She didn't quite get her full potential. Always fighting older girls, bigger girls. This is for her. She's coming down a weight. She probably might end up a super featherweight if we get day before weighing. She's a monster at super featherweight. She'll stop anyone in front of her. That girl's never had that done to her before. Not like that. Um, and she'll do it again, I guarantee it. I wanted to box and get the rounds in. But as soon as she started landing, I know what's going to happen. I didn't even expect um, She's got power, but when she picks it and doesn't rush, in the three round amateur fight, she was always rushing. Now she can sit and box. She'll pick them off. And lightweights, super featherweights, even going up, you know, super lightweights. There's anyone there she can work her way through. You know, we're not calling anyone out, we're not being stupid. We're gonna be really slow with her, but if people don't see that and see talent and see that she can sell 8,000 pounds of her tickets, we drove two hours to get here, then there's something wrong in boxing. This girl's a star, I'll tell you now. Quite a statement you made tonight. Was there any nerves going in? Uh, yeah, there was quite a few nerves. Um, I mean, only up until the last minute, but pure excitement throughout really, but yeah. Well, it was a fantastic performance, a great crowd, great atmosphere, well done. Is it all right if I just say thanks to everyone that's come out tonight, all my sponsors, because I wouldn't be here without them. And got the best this guy here. <laughs> yeah. like, we're like a team, obviously, her sister's on the GB, you know, squad, just come back from the European Championships, so it's a, it's a family thing. She'll be going to the Olympics, just missed out on the last one, and then she'll be coming at you wait. We'll have the first two sisters in pros in GB boxing, you wait. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Well, heard it here first. Well done. Thank you so much. Right, we'll keep the action coming. The next fighters are ready to make their way to the ring, so we'll hand over to our MC. Well, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, action continues now in the welterweight division. So please welcome into the arena to the red corner, Alexander Zelador. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome now into the arena to the blue corner, Robert Vincent! Vincent, another guy who shifted plenty of tickets, just 18 years old. He had one senior amateur fight before turning pro because it was hard to get fights. I chatted to him earlier on, actually. So he just sat down waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, C. 
distinguished guests. The action continues now as Mr. Lee in an association with TM14 Promotions and Into Boxing proudly present four rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, supervisor here at ringside, Mr. Des Reese. Our timekeeper at the bell for this bout, Mr. Ashley McGill. And referee in charge of the action, Mr. Mark Bates. So introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, his official weight on the scales, 10 stone, 11 pounds. He is an experienced international boxer, wearing the white shorts from Nicaragua, presenting Kikarona Alexander Zelle. His opponent this evening, standing across the ring, boxing out of the blue corner. Official weight on the scales, 10 stone, 8 pounds. Tonight, he makes his professional in-ring debut with the white and red shorts from Alpinton, presenting the outlaw, Robert Vincent. Our referee, Mr. Mark Bates, to give his final instructions. So another debutante under plenty of pressure to deliver here. We just saw one in Harley Whitwell, and she definitely did that. Owen Gidman earlier on gave us a good display. And we've got a southpaw here in the red. Second out, round one. And Vincent won some London titles, National School Board titles. As an amateur, but as I said, has decided to turn pro young. Looks for a left hand there early on. Zeladon, who's been down the stretch quite a few times. Emotionally boxing here and in Spain since moving to Spain in 2019. And Vincent looking to start nice and quick hit. Zeladon really looks like he's got out of bed at the minute. He's, he's so laid back. Yeah, he's got that relaxed style, isn't he? Looking for the jab there, Vincent, just slightly short with it. Good off the body movement there, he's got to be careful because those two punches he ain't there, they were never going to be legal blows in a million years. <laughs> a little bit of dirty stuff. Good signs of speed and reflexes right now. Jab and then the left hand that just came in slightly off centre. Zelda Dunks looking to reward in that really good hit. Yeah, very slick, very nice head movement. He's shown very good mobility in there today. Just managed to turn his way out of the corner, escape from the corner. Zeladon again just piles in behind the right hand there. That back foot comes round, he ends up a bit square. Vincent is very, very busy in this opening round. Got to keep his shape. It's the final minute of round one. Zeldon's trying to use his experience to fluster him a little bit, but he's just got to keep his shape and keep his composure. He's got an experienced corner over there. Bradley's been there and done it multiple times, so he'll be he'll be coaching him for it during the corners. This opening round of a pro career, particularly when you've you've sold this many tickets, the, the noise around us the inside is deafening. I can I can barely hear myself, let alone you at times, and <laughs> that brings a, a pressure of its of its own. And it's probably just a little bit too much movement in this opening round. Yeah, maybe a bit too much. We've got to settle down. The crowd's obviously getting to him a little bit. He's obviously eager to impress, but he's doing a good good job so far. Just don't want to burn himself out because this experienced opponent will start walking him down and start trying to grind him down for as the rounds go on. So it's, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. These fights. Nice one too there, though, from Vincent. Looks for a, a left hand lead, final few seconds of round one. 
Zeladon just tearing up with a big overhand right there. Zeladon's definitely come to... He's not come to lie down today. He's definitely come to let his hands go. Throwing bigger haymaking shots at the end of the round there. One thing I'm always curious about is whether when you're fighting, you hear anything that people are screaming at ringside. Because you've, got, you've got all sorts of advice coming yeah, in. You do. All sorts of advice. Yeah, you get people, uh, everyone turns a coach at ringside. They're all telling you what combinations to throw, what to do. But it's all about just zoning out from the crowd and listening to your corner. It's uh, good when you've got a big crowd there encouraging you, calling your name and chanting your name. It gives you that uh, life of energy, but you don't know if he's trying to take instructions from random people in the crowd. Well, anyone who's, who's watched any of your fights will know that you get plenty of the coaches on side. Your yeah, two sisters, that's something else. <laughs> yeah, I can always, I always guarantee to hear someone get my fights. It's definitely you know, good encouragement and good support all the time. So into the second touch of grace between the two. So we've done looking for a jab early on there. Again, just looking to aim that big right hand from way back. Vincent can see that coming. He's just standing on the borderline of Rome's elegant, just waiting, isn't he, for some kind of trigger, some kind of opening, yeah, just to launch is. something massive. He's looking for a counter punch, he's looking for a big counter punch. He's got to be careful, he's got to be switched on. It's very important he sticks to his fundamentals and he keeps his hand placement well because he's going to shoot something out of nowhere in a second. As that jab from Vincent, be nice to see him use that a little bit more. There we go. Beautiful now. There we go. Now he's relaxed and he's sticking to his boxing. He looks like he's going through the, the works he's been doing in the gym now. Moving well around that front foot, making Zeladon miss with a right hand. Yeah, that was the, the big haymaker he was looking for that we saw him um, looking to tee up earlier on in the round. Oh, there we go again, he's trying to throw them haymakers out of him. No way, he's got to be switched on here. He's boxing very well, he's got to stay switched on. Just pulled his upper body back nicely as that latest right hand came winging towards him. Good shot there, led off with a jab and backhand down the middle. Southpaw, nice backhand, left down the middle. Oh, in front. oh there we go, good counter. There we go, good shot. That's very there good, good shot, very really good shot. Oh, there's that haymaker we were just talking about a second ago. Into the final minute of round two and Zeladon is looking to land and he managed to turn out of the corner and tagged him with a good combination, but yeah. maybe just Lost concentration slightly when the right hand came back, but that was, that was some really good stuff there from Vincent. Very good stuff, it was good signs, but you just got to be careful with these haymakers for getting thrown out of nowhere. You know, one shot with them 10 ounce gloves or 8 ounce gloves, they can make them cause serious damage. Well, this is well too late, so there would be 8 ounce. And when you talk to any fighter about turning pro, about the differences between amateur and pro, and the gloves is one thing they always mention as well. Yeah. Again, just looks to climb into a massive right hand, but Vincent has seen them coming so far. And that mm -hmm. second round, he did just slow things down a little bit, didn't he? He did yeah, just settle his feet yeah. a bit, and, and that move out of the corner right above us, that was that was high quality. That was very good. I think that's what it showed. The first round was the nerves, you know, on the, big, on, the on the stage with all his fans, etc. And in a uh, second round, he settled down and got back to his boxing. And, got into the fight now so um, I think he's more switched on now and he's the occasion he's he, he's uh climatized to the occasion now what's it like when you pull on those those smaller gloves for the first time and you know you're heading in there without without the head guard because I've spoken to quite a lot of fighters about this and remember Matt Mack then telling me that he could barely get his hand in an eight yeah. ounce glove he could barely get his hand in and the first time he was really clipped with one 
Frampton was the same Carl Frampton, the three of us were chatting Go about it. And he's, he got hit and he thought, oh, that's different. Yeah. I that remember putting the gloves on and I literally hit my own hand thinking there's not much padding in here. Um, I thought, uh, if, you get, if, I get, if I hit someone, this is going to hurt. And I thought, well, oh, he's got the same gloves. I've got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> So into the second half of the fight, debutant Rod Vincent is boxing nicely in the white and red. Alexander Zeladon of Spain, originally Nicaragua in the white. Done again, just he's right on the borderline. He's, he's kind of his feet are in range actually, just pulls that weight onto the back foot. But he needs to stay nice and close because, as we've been saying, whenever he gets the chance, he's just going to lasso in he's a going big to one. Launch that big backhand, which he's been trying all night. You can still see him waiting for it. He's sizing it up, sizing it up. Here he goes now. He's got to be careful at this point here. I knew it. He's going to throw that, he's going to throw them big looping hooks. He's not a not sort of opponent you want if you've got a short concentration span. No, absolutely not. He <laughs> just leads off with that left hand every now and again, Vincent, which does bring you a little bit square. It's quite risky. Good left hand there from Vincent. Good shooting, good shot. Now he's letting his hand go a bit faster. up against the south, but what you're looking to do generally is get your lead foot on the outside of your opponent's lead foot, and he steps onto the outside there, Vincent, but a lot of the time he doesn't seem too worried about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Zeldon, he, he wants to really have a tear up, and he just can't get drawn into his fight. That's it, beautiful boxing, don't get drawn into his fight, stick to your pencil, stick to your boxing, don't get sucked into the other guy's fight. Zelodon just beating his chest, a look of absolute rage on his face there, because <laughs> Vincent basically won't comply with what he wants him to do. He's trying to get him to lose his cool here a little bit, and as you say, hold his feet and trade, which is the last thing he should be That's doing. That's the but last thing you want to do with this guy. And he's not doing it, he's, he's working around that front foot nicely, when he looked like he might be caught in the corner, he spun his way out, good jab, this is some good stuff. Boxing beautiful, he's showing quite good discipline for a guy early on in his career also. It's easy to get sucked in with the crowd there as well, cheering you on, but very well done. Very impressive. A little grin there from Zeladon. He, he knows that he's, he's doing everything he can to, to tempt him in here, but he's just not biting. No. He's a Bradley Skeet kind of a fighter, isn't he? He is. That's exactly what Bradley Skeet's like, back foot, slick boxer, and he looks like he's uh, showing all of that, and he's, uh, what he's, he's coaching now and putting onto his fighter, teaching him a similar style, which is good. Uh, is today, uh, he definitely would need that with the sort of opponent he's got today. If he got draw, drawn into a war, he could be coming out uh, hurt or damaged. So, the right style of fight. So, quarter final round coming up, and there's Eladon just trying to muscle in that big right hand. Second down, ball, and final round. So, one fight to come after this. We will have a look at Alfie Winter, trained by Kevin Mitchell, who's up against Justin Menzi. Six threes at well to eight. I'm looking forward to this. Alfie Winter actually trains down at our gym, at the matchroom gym with Kevin. Very, very fit guy, he trains very hard, so it'll be good to see how he performs today. Zeladon again with that beautiful, beautiful nice shot. He's sticking with his principles beautifully, nicely. 
Nice switch hit in there. Turned orthodox, very, very briefly there, Vincent. Looking for that right hand again, there's Eladon, but in truth, he's never really looked very likely to land it. I don't want to tempt fate on behalf of Vincent's supporters <laughs> here, but he's, he's done a good job of staying out of the way. Yeah, he has. He's definitely done a good job. Careful that backhand there again. Beautiful so orthodox kind of punch that time, wasn't it? Yeah. He's working well with the jab upstairs and then right to the body. He's working the head and body quite beautifully, showing good variety, not just head hunting as most people do early on in their career. But again, Zeladon. And stalking forward. Stalking forward and actually showing good head movement as well on his way in. Good composure. There's that dangerous right hand over the top again that he's got to be careful of. But Vincent is just never in the same place for long enough. No. Tremendous movement, good movement. There you go, that's good counter punching back. He caught his opponent square. Only thing I would say about Vincent is I'm not tends to lean it to the gym to go and work on. Gives Bradley Sam to work on when he gets back to the gym. Silicon's just got this kind of warlike demeanor yeah. about him, has done from the very, very start. His intentions have been very clear as he looks to step into another big, wild left hook, looking for the right hand, but he's on the move there, Vincent. A little bit of a slip, and maybe just got caught with one right at the very end there, but. That was good stuff, good technique, good composure, maybe just uh, a little bit overexcited in round number one, which is yeah. absolutely understandable, but after that he, he showed us plenty. Yeah, he settled down, he settled down and got to his boxing, never got drawn in, he never let his ego get the better of him, he settled down and just got to his boxing and it was, it was very good discipline. And that's a good fight for a, for a debut against that kind of opponent because he comes to win. Oh, yeah, it does. That's a very risky fight for a debut, to be honest. Um, and he handled it very well. So Bradley obviously knows his ability and put his, uh, his fighter in with the right sort of uh, level that he feels he needs to progress and grow moving through, through to the ranks. And when you box at the, in the amateur ranks, one thing that's always really interesting for me, whether it's if, if you box at a good level at, at amateur, Early in your pro career, you'll find yourself in with people who have got styles that you just you've, you've never, never seen. Faced. Yeah, exactly. You've never seen. Well, as the amateurs, there's a lot of point scoring. Everyone's up on their toes trying to point score at the end of their shots, and then you'll get a journeyman. You think, oh yeah, his record um, is deceiving because it looks bad, and he's sitting there and he's winging shots in with them little gloves on, and it's now a fight. It's not a boxing match. It's actually, a fight, and then that's not what you're used to. So you've got to adapt to the style, and this is why you get eased in as the ranks go through. Well, that's it. Zeladon just looking to take his opponent's head off with every single punch that he throws. So that was a good watch. He was entertaining. OK, these two in the middle of the ring. Let's get the announcement. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to see the next yet. After four rounds of boxing, we go to our referee's scorecard. Referee Mark Bates scores the contest. 40 and 36 for your winner from Orpington, the Outlander, Vincent! So four rounds to nil there for Vincent, and it was a good display, a good solid, high tempo, 12 minutes. He's only 18 years old, only one fight as a senior, sometimes it rings alarm bells with me a bit when somebody turns out, turns over Craig without any senior experience because yeah. you haven't been in with men, yeah. you haven't been fighting men. It's a whole different ball game, really. You got you got to get in there with the men because it's a whole different ball game. As the amateurs, they're even less sitting on their shots, point scoring, etc. When you get into the seniors, it's three minutes, three rounds, and they're setting it down a little bit more. It's um, it's a different ball game, really. So it's, it's good to get senior experience before moving into the pro ranks, I believe. Well, just posing for a few photos. It's a good display from boxing since he was four years old, and you could tell because he looked very, 
at home in there, basically. And that's always a really, really good sign. So him and trainer Bradley Skeet have just slid through the ropes. Here they are with Ali. I feel great, I mean, I've been boxing since I was four-year-old. It was him who got me into it. It was him. He was Golden Gloves champion, so I've always followed his journey. And now I've, I've, I've made it to the pro game. Now, there wasn't, it didn't look like there was any nerves there. You looked like you enjoyed every moment. I mean, I've had a great amateur experience. I mean, I've won titles. I mean, I've uh, had 30 plus fights. I mean, the nerves, I mean, they're like half gone, but you still get, do you know what I mean? I don't show my nerves much, so I just, now, there was great movement in, throughout the fight there from you. Obviously a professional debut, but it didn't look like it. No, he's been in the gym, he's putting the work in the gym, he's done really well. He listens. Uh, Where's he's very young, so I was a bit like, I wanted him to stay amateur for another year, I'll be honest with him, I said that to him, but he, he, he was fed up with it and I said, listen, we work. if you put in the work and show me, you can put in the work in the gym and then I'll get, I'll get you a fight and then we'll see where we go. And he's just showed tonight, he's it's, it's looked like he's done it before, so he, he's done well. He certainly did. And just a word to all the supporters who are here tonight for you. I just want to thank all of them, the whole family to me. Yeah, uh, they're all, they've all been here for me since I was, since I was in my first gym show at nine. And I'll just, they'll be there for the rest of my career. When are we going to see you out next? Hopefully before Christmas, if not early, uh, early years after, after Christmas. I'm going um, to train extra hard now. Now I know what I'm capable of. Fitness can be improved, but I'm, I'm going to step up a level now for a trainer. Couldn't get better trainer. Yeah, Bradley Skeets. He knows what it's like in there. I mean, that was one of the most confident pro debuts I've seen. Yeah, that's it. He's, like I say, he works hard in the gym. And I told him, the hard work's in the gym. This is the easy bit. This is where he needs to go and enjoy it and show his skills and show what he's done. Because that's, that's where the hard work's done in the gym. This is this is the easy bit. And he, and he just showed it tonight. He done really well. He was confident. And that's the main thing. I wanted him to be confident and just didn't let the nerves get the better of him. He was, he was a bit nervous. But once he got in there, he was, he was flying. Well, it was a great performance. Congratulations. Thank you very much, miss. Right, now we move to our final fight of the evening. The fighters are ready, so we'll hand over to our MC. Menzi in this very ring back at the end of September oh, when he gave Lenny Fuller a good go over four rounds he lost it three rounds to one but a couple of our fighters on the right hand side of the build tonight he was a very capable operator there's less more than he's won but having started life in the home corner he then sprints to the away corner and he's taken on some tough jobs most notably and ladies and gentlemen yeah, I've seen Mendes a few times actually. I remember he boxed on uh, Boba Sagba for a title fight. He boxed very well. This should be a very good contest. So this is Alfie Winter making his way now. Trained by Kevin Mitchell, managed by Richard Maynard, turned over earlier this year. And has won by five so far. In him and Kevin McCauley, then Rustin Van Coolen. I've seen Rustin Van Coolen before, and he's a good fighter. And he looks to give it to you. So that was a good opponent to have. Okay. Well, early on, he's got a head clash in that fight as well. His last fight was a uh, six round win, won every round at the start of July against Bernard Sanchez. So that was their uh, respective. Records. And as Craig has said, he's done a lot of work down with the match ranges. Spot by Connor Ben, Joe Cordina. So plenty of good experience under his belt in that regard. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, our final bout of the event is the V. Thank you. 
So this is our final fight of the night. Six rounds in the welterweight division. Alfie Winter boxing out of that blue corner on the left in the white. His opponent Justin Menzi in the black. It should be a good contest. Both capable opponents. Different Winter. stages of their careers, but yeah, very good. Put his hands together very well there. Looking to start nice and quick here, Winter. As I mentioned, Menzi started life himself in the home corner, then lost to Bradley Price by stoppage in a fight that maybe they were reckoning that he would win. Picked up his stool and headed over to the away corner. Winter looking to really put them together early on here, but he's tucked up well there, Menzi. Yeah, he tucked up very well there. But Alfie is putting them together well also. He's, he's, he's come off to a flying start, Alfie. He's not here to mess around. Turns the knuckles over on that right hand really well. Yeah, he's looking to sink them shots in. Menzi just Ooh. not really able to throw too much back, but as I say that, he finds an, an uppercut. He's gone in round one, and Winter has put a lot into this so far. He's just stepping off a little bit here. Oh, good shot, good shot, good shot. That left hand to the body was solid. We could hear that one echoing around us at ringside. Alfie Winter's not given Menzi a chance to even get into the contest. He's uh, letting them go, being very aggressive, putting his hands together. Mendes is forced to tuck up constantly throughout this contest. And he's done that pretty well, actually, because that right hand there down the middle, he blocked that with the gloves, and then he looked for a left hand, which was well delivered there from Winter, but the right hand was, was up and, and blocked it there from Menzi. But that's going to have to remain being the case. Good right hand down the centre there guard. for Winter. Menzi has got a very good guard, and... Um, Lucky for him he has so, because uh, Winter is definitely whipping them right in. A couple of lefts to the body there, right above us. He's firing back. Menzo was trying to fire back off the ropes there. And good movement from Alfie, beautiful head movement. Absolutely beautiful head movement from him. As we say, sometimes the coaches reflect the fighters. You know, Kevin Mitchell always had great head movement. He's uh, showing it in his fighter today. Just chipping away on the inside there, Winter, looking at, to see if he could find a slightly different angle to get something through. Again, he's trying to... He may have to work the body, because Mendes has got tight hands towards the head. He might have to go downstairs for the body. So one round down. The winter corner. It's Kevin Mitchell's birthday today, actually. Yeah, it is actually. It's Kevin's birthday. I should have brought him a cake, really. <laughs> 39 years old, he is. I remember when he turned pro as an 18 year old. I always loved him as a fighter. Yeah, he used to sell out O2 arenas, have the whole of the West Ham support fan base out. 
You know, I remember as I was, early as I was just about to turn professional, he was one of the first few shows I went to in the O2 Arena, and I saw how exciting it was and the fan base it had, and it really, like, spared even myself on to want to get onto these big shows based on fighters like Kevin Mitchell. I know there were a few... He stopped it. Regrets He's been there, stopped maybe. it. Stopped the fight already. First round stoppage. Oh, that was beautiful. I think he may be hurt to the body or his hand. I'm not sure if he's complaining about his hand. Well, you're absolutely right. It's all over after the after the first round, and that was a, a quick, quick start from Winter. He got stuck into his boxing immediately. He put the punches together well. Manzi was keeping that guard intact, that tight, tight guard, and was managing to block most of what came his way. But these away corner fighters, he now won't be able to box for a month, but sometimes you just judge yeah. it. You think, am I really going to try and get through five more rounds that, of this? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a lot. If that's happened to you in the first round, you've got five more, and you know the pressure he's applying. It's not worth it. It's just not worth the thing. And Alfie Winter, he was bringing the heat constantly. He was looking to uh, put pain and aggression on him tonight, so he wasn't going to ease up. He didn't like he was slowing down anytime soon. We know Alfie Winter's a very fit man, so he'd have been doing that for rounds and rounds. So the, the corner made the right decision pulling him out today. Yeah, I 100% agree. It's no criticism, Menzi, at all. It's no, I'm not questioning his minerals in the slightest. It's just, it's a risk versus reward there. Five more rounds of that could have been punishing, damaging, and to be honest with you, he probably felt, his corner felt, his trainer felt, he didn't need to be a hero in there tonight. No, there's nothing on the line. It's not a title fight. It's, he'll come again next month. Exactly, exactly. But we like what we saw there from Winter. He was like a dog let off a leash, wasn't he? He's obviously been training very, very hard. I think he'll probably be a bit frustrated that he didn't get the chance to show us a bit more of what he could do. But nonetheless, yeah, he was impressive. It was impressive. You know, you do the hard work in the gym. Tonight, it's just about getting the job done, and that's what he's done. He's, he's worked weeks and weeks, probably heavily in the gym, and now he's uh, it's paid, it's paid off. And that's what people don't see. They think tonight was just all the work. It's the 10, 12 weeks he's trained to get the job done. Well, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, our referee is Sam Stewart, Simon on the school. Your winner by TKO. So a fifth professional win there for Alfie Winter. I'm sure he'll be looking to get back out as quickly as he possibly can. As I said, he was probably a bit frustrated that he didn't manage to get two or three rounds under his belt, but he was right into his groove right from the very, very start. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. As I said, he's, he's managed by Richard Maynard. He's just away to our our left-hand side. He's a very well-connected man within the boxing world, so I'm sure he'll be looking to get him up and out on, on all sorts of cards. This is a good showcase for him. But he's got a kind of TV look about him, Alfie Winter, if I'm honest. I think he's going to be good to watch. With Mitchell in the corner and that kind of backing with Richard too, I think I think we might be seeing a bit more of him on our, on our screens. Anyway, here he is, down inside with Ali. Fantastic win there. It was over a little bit quicker than I think you thought it was going to be. How did that feel? Disappointing, to be honest. Like, I put my body through torture. Like, I sacrificed a lot. Been a long camp. Um, I'm gutted for the people that have paid money to come see me, to be honest. I like, sold a few tickets and uh, times are hard at the minute. And I'm grateful for the support, obviously, but I'm just a bit annoyed that I couldn't put on more of a performance. Obviously, it was cut short. So. What was your thought behind when they retired in the corner? I didn't know what was going on, but like, you never know what a fighter's got going on behind closed doors, do you know what I mean? So, I don't know the, like, the full situation. I can only say what I'm seeing, and it's, I put it on him a bit. I think maybe he thought, do you know what? I don't really fancy it. I don't know. I don't know. I enjoyed it either way, but was hoping for more of it. Do you know what I mean? It's only what well, a round. I mean, you controlled the, the rounds that you did. Um, do you think you can take anything from that fight, learn anything from it? Yeah, I think I was like over eager to load up with big shots and things like that. Like, if you go off my last performances, I haven't lost a round yet and, and I can box nicely, I've got good skills. I think I look for power a little bit, a little bit too much. But yeah, you can take, it's, it's hard to take 
positives and negatives from a one round fight, but we, we, we analyse it and we'll, and we'll go back and work on things 100%. Yeah, because you were throwing a lot of heavy shots, landing some of them, he was blocking some of them, but was that the game plan going into it? Mm, nah, like, I thought he was there to be stopped, but like, I never really tried to load up too much. I knew that if I put it on him, that may happen, it happened before, but I think, like, I don't know the ins and outs, but there was things going on behind closed doors that, uh, that obviously, like, not, yeah, nothing to do with me, but um, yeah, I, I, I did have a feeling he would sort of do that. So I thought, yeah, let's put it on him and see if he does it. So he did. Well, got another round under your belt, but when are you next out, hoping to get a few more rounds in? Um, hopefully I'll get one out before the end of the year and we can uh, look to move on to titles next year. And uh, yeah, just keep keep doing what I'm doing. I feel like we're building momentum now, so I want to keep the ball rolling. Like, it's been a busy year. I only had my debut in February and that was number five. So we're, we're picking them up. So you're hoping to have one more, so it'll be six in a year? Six in a year, but if I get another one in after, like before February, that's seven in the first year. Well, within a year, do you know what I mean? Busy's better. Busy's boxer around. Well, well done. Not the, not the win that you wanted, but still unbeaten. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Right, it's been a, another great night of boxing here at York Hall. As always, there's been some great performances, great atmosphere here. Just a reminder that the next show, Let's Go Management Show, is on the 11th of November from Grey's. So make sure you tune in. It's on Into Boxing. See you next time.